Brady, love you, bye. Is this going to stay the same as this all the time? This should be that, all yeah. Right. I'll watch whichever one. <laughs> This software so has okay the ability right to let you see what the viewers are seeing within the software. It's the output thing up here, which is pretty awesome. Oh, so instead of having to open a website, you open a website and yeah. go to there. It's better software. I can tell. Is it? Yeah, I can tell. This has never locked up before either. I can't really okay. We only had it. So What's the problem? That's what the viewer is leaning a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. Leaning which way? Towards us? Is that what I'm saying? Is yeah, leaning towards? Sure. All right. Well, is Graham with him? Yeah, but he's going to be doing side lines. That's okay. Right now, can they extend the front leg out? Yeah. Extend the front leg out or shorten the back two legs to tripod. I never saw Rooney to get the SD cards. We got it. What okay. way is it leaning? Is it leaning towards the field? Is it leaning towards us? Okay, well, shorten, extend that leg or the two legs to make sh to make that side higher. Okay, you good? Just it's a it's a tripod. It's just a, a tri tripod. You just you just gotta make sure you just gotta level it out pretty much. Okay. Okay. Bye. Jason, will you give me some kind of signal before you go live? I'll just keep an eye on you so I know when you're. Okay. Okay. All right. Throw some at him. You comfortable? Why are these on? Do you know? Are they on the floor? I do mostly cuts. Oh, it's one way. Turn that off. That's weird. That is so weird. What is it doing? Well, it's just doing some funky. See how it. That's camera one. That's camera. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Check, check, Hello and welcome to second round action of the Georgia High School Association Class 6A State Playoffs. My name is Travis Chafin and we are coming to you live from West Forsyth High School where the 10-1 Wolverines welcome the 8-3 Parkview Panthers. Tonight's coverage, a collaborative effort between ListenYourWay.com, WFHS-TV, and Play On Sports. Tonight's game is brought to you by Andine Chevrolet. Your Forsyth County Marathon Stations, Amos Pump Service, and the Allstate Chapman Agency. Now with your play-by-play -play call, Johnny Talent, Andy Coleman, and John White. John? Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Andy and I have been away for a week. Andy comes in tonight with a week-old baby. Congratulations, <laughs> Andy. What a Thanksgiving present that was to bring him home from the hospital. Um... Johnny Talent, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. I'm glad to see see another exciting game. 
Well, we're looking forward to a really exciting game tonight. The captains are out on the field. We're getting ready for the coin toss, and there it is. Captains are Momo Kamara, uh, A.J. Erdley. Who else is out there? We've got Josh Salo and... Big Ty Anderson. That's right. I can't see the numbers. 44, it looks like. Uh, 44 is Micah Finley, and 4 is Ju- Justice Rosser, and 6 is Shaq Shaq Green. And I think the other guy was 16. I mean, I don't know. It's that orange. That's what it is. It is. I'm, a, it? I'm a Georgia Bulldog fan, so I'm a little <laughs> bit biased towards those orange numbers. Well, it looks like the Wolverines are going to be receiving the kickoff. This is, uh, as Travis told you, the second round of the playoffs. Here we are at the den. It, uh, we've been extraordinarily fortunate with our weather. We've got about 50 degrees out right now. It's a beautiful night for football in Georgia. And I think we're in for an exciting game tonight. This is going to be one of the toughest games the Wolverines have had to date. Parkview comes in with, a, I believe, an 8 or 9-2 and two record. Yeah, when you get to this point, John, there's no easy ones. We're down to the final 16 teams in the largest classification in the state. And um, I'm really ready, excited for some good football tonight. Glad to see the Wolverines getting the ball to start this game because, you know, if you've kept up with West Forsyth this year, they've got this high-powered offense that put up a lot of points last week, over 60. You can hear that home crowd ready to cheer on the Wolverines. Andy, this Parkview team comes in after a big win in overtime to beat Walton to get here. They wasn't really expected to do very much this year, but they upset Grayson and, and the regular season, and they're in the playoffs, so they're a formidable team. Yeah, you mentioned the Grayson game. That's the one big fear factor, I think, for most people that know high school football in Georgia and are West Forsyth fans. They look at that schedule and see where they upset what was – I think one of the top-ranked teams in the nation at the time. So uh, they can do it any night, any Friday night. Parkview can come to play, and um, I think this West Forsyth offense is going to see the best test that they have all season long. Yeah, this is a defensive-minded team at Parkview. They don't average but about 19 points a game, but they average giving up even less. So they're, they're a formidable defense. I was reading the AJC this morning. I think they put Parkview at giving up 13.2 a game and Mm. West Forsyth scoring 42.7. So something's got to give. Gentlemen, gentlemen standing up. I might need a little help here. All right, everybody's going to stand up in a minute. We're going to kick it off. Well, Parkview's getting ready to kick off the ball. Is that number 29? Eric Autry going to be kicking off the park view. Jake Wysork and and Will Brown are deep for the Wolverines. There we go. We're underway here in the den. And the ball goes out of the end zone for a touchback. So the Wolverines will start the game at their own 20-yard line, first and 10. Parkview saw what happened last week when they kicked to the two deep guys from West Forsyth. Return game came up big for West Forsyth early on. So that's one way to put a stop to it, just kick it in the end zone. All right, A.J. Erdley, quarterback for the Wolverines. Awaits the snap. A little bit of shifting going on. Starting off with that guard trap, and Parkview was ready for it. Trevor O'Brien lost a yard. Now bring up second down and 11 at the 19-yard line. Thirdly, shotgun. I believe I'd say this is the most athletic-looking defense I've seen West face all year. There's some big boys out there. A lot of speed in that defensive backfield, too, looks like. 
They run it right at them again. And Trevor O'Brien going nowhere. Maybe gained a yard back to the original line. Of, nope, yep, they're going to put it back on the 20-yard line. That's going to bring up third and 10. Going to get to see that arm of A.J. Early right now, the Middle Tennessee commit who's put up big, big numbers this year. A.J. back to pass. Airs one out. There we go. Oh, he dropped it. It was intended for Ty Anderson. It just kind of bounced out of his hands. So the Wolverines, three and out. They're going to have to punt. Johnny, you mentioned the speed of the Parkview defense, and we saw it right there because for a split second, one of his favorite guys, Ty Anderson, was wide open, but they closed on it, and he slapped it away last second. Yeah, those defensive backs are really good. Looks like number two. Uh, Dawson was in on the play, and also number five, Brinson. So they they got a good defensive team. Good snap. Oh, no. Not a very good kick. A 15-yard kick. Ball goes out of bounds at the 35-yard line in Wolverine territory, and that's where Parkview will uh, have their first try at this. First break of the game goes to Parkview there, looks like, as they'll get great field position. Yeah, I don't care how many points you're averaging per game. If you're part view and you get that kind of field position, you're going to score some. Rossers in the backfield. Quick handoff, sweeping to the right, takes a good cut. He's at the 20, uh, the 15, the 10, the 5, and they score. And the good we've, got news. A, we've got a penalty flag back there, though. I believe we've got a block in the back or some, some kind of offensive penalty, I believe. Oh, face mask. Huh. How about that? Wow. The face mask on the offense. Running back took it to the hole, didn't he? Yeah, he did. You think West Forsyth's the explosive team? Well, we had – Three and none. These guys took it to the house on the first play. I think we're pretty fortunate to get that penalty. Yeah, that was Brandon Sullivan, I believe, number 22, who had that run. <clears throat> well, maybe that woke up the defense of West Forsyth. I heard a rumor before the game that we might get to see one of the top defensive players, Jacob Hill, back on the field, but Kendall Phillips, number six, is still in there at corner. So I'll have to check on that. That was a five-yard penalty from the point of the infraction, so that brings up first and 17. Ball sits at the 42-yard line. Quarterback underneath center. Quick handoff up the middle. The Wolverines shut him down a little bit more efficiently that time. Gain of about three. We don't have a number 12 listed on the roster of the quarterback. They had had an injury to the quarterback, but he must have come back. Well, if you listen to me... You've heard me talk about early in the game, I like to watch a line of scrimmage. Well, right now on offense, Parkview is dominating the line of scrimmage. Only two or three plays in, they're exploding off the football. Second down and 13, ball sits just inside the 39-yard line. Back to pass. No, he's keeping it. Quarterback keeps it, runs up the middle. There we go. And he is stopped immediately by the Wolverines. Gains about two yards. He had about four Wolverines in on that. You know, South, uh, West had good good pursuit on that play. Momo Kamara in the bottom of the pile. He jumped on top of that one. Most would say the top defender for the Wolverines. Mo Kamara, number three, heading to South Carolina next year. But you got to give about eight guys credit on that play. They jumped all over it. Third and 12 for Parkview. Let's see what the Wolverines can do here on this play. Here's Jacob Hill at the bottom of your screen now. Number 18 in a corner. He's back to pass. Looking downfield. Airs one out. Wide open in the end zone. And that's a touchdown oh. for Parkview. Beautiful pass there. You can't pitch it and catch it much better than that. I thought my man Jacob Hill was going to bat it away right at the end, but 
Well, there were two defenders converging on them, but they just couldn't get there in time. That receiver kind of snuck under the middle and got free. Well, he put that ball on a, on a beautiful pass there. Football is a game of inches, and they proved it right there. One of the oldest sayings in the book, but he probably wasn't inbounds by one more than an inch or two, and Jacob just missed batting that ball away by a couple of inches. Here's Parkview for the point after. Kick is up. And good, and with less than three minutes of play in the first quarter, Parkview scores first. Seven to nothing. Tonight's game on listenyourway.com is presented by your Forsyth County Marathon, marathon Stations, Amos Pump Service, the Allstate Chapman Agency, and Andine Chevrolet. And coming, visit them on the web at andinechevy.com or in person on Atlanta Road in coming. Nobody will see you. Nobody will sell you a new Chevy for less. We guarantee it. Well, part of you drew first blood, your guys, so they're up to West for South now to come back as they're down 7 nothing with 8.48 to go in the first quarter. Well, we had field position against us on that drive. We gave them the ball on the 35-yard line because we couldn't do anything with it, and then we had a 15-yard punt. Yeah, 15-yard punt. So That's not going to help. Will Brown and Jake Wyzorek back for the Wolverines. Maybe they'll give old, uh, Will Brown a chance to return one here. So if you guys haven't listened to me yet before, I'm a little bit biased. I'm a West Forsyth fan, so hopefully Johnny will keep me in check. <laughs> uh, I, 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 we watched West Forsyth last week, and I tell you, they, they impressed me with the, the kick returns, and two of them for touchdowns, and then several more long runs. Very Eric Autry impressive. with the kickoff. Right at the goal line. Jake Wyzorek has the ball. He's up to the 30-yard line. Good return. 30-yard return for Jake Wyzorek. Mr. Do-Everything, Jacob Wyzorek, one of my favorite high school football players I've ever seen play the game. We didn't get him involved much on that last drive, so I got a real good feeling that he would get to touch the football this time. All right, for their second possession, the Wolverines have the ball at the 31-yard line. A.J. in the shotgun. Rolls to his left. He's keeping the ball, trying to find a place to get around, and doesn't find anything. Loses a couple of yards on that. Jacob went over 1,000 yards rushing last week, and he's knocking at the door for 1,000 yards receiving. And the way that we're running the ball right now, we might have to start throwing it a little more. These guys are pretty much dominating the line of scrimmage. Second and 13 for the Wolverines. Quick pass. Oh. Caught from behind quickly at the 30-yard line. Gain of three brings up third down and 11 for the Wolverines. I think that play may set something up for later in the game because Wazork went ran a wheel route up the top of the sideline, and he was not covered. I'm hoping the guys up in the booth saw the same thing. Wazork has the ball. He's trying to find room around the side. Ran out of bounds at the 32, 33 yard line, but that's not enough. That's going to bring up a fourth down for the Wolverines. That speed of the Parkview defense is making itself very evident. I don't think the Wolverines have seen anybody that fast this year. Well, they, they cover from sideline to sideline. I think the, probably the only defense I could compare to this was Chattahoochee, and uh, we all know what happened that game. The one blemish on the Wolverine record this year. Hampton McConnell back to kick. Good snap. A little bit better kick low, but it's going to get a good roll for the Wolverines. There we go. And the ball is spotted at the 23-yard line, so that's about a 45-yard kick, a lot better than last time, putting, uh, putting Parkview back in their own territory for their second series of plays. Parkview's running variations in their offense. They'll run a wildcat type formation. All of them's been in shotgun, but they sometimes they'll run without a quarterback and use somebody else as a wildcat. And they've all got speed. Obviously a big, strong team, and their coaches and players think they're just going to power the football over you. 
quick handoff. Number six. He's getting around the outside. He's in the open. It's a 16-yard gain. It's Shaq Vereen. He had a great game last week oh, against Walton. So he started off again today with another good run. Ball's put down at the 39-yard line, first and 10 for Parkview. You mentioned the Wildcat, Johnny, and little number 22 tailback took the snap on that last play. Mm-hmm. And they just use a number of players in different positions. They've already had four or five back in that Wildcat position. Now they're back three of them back there. Maybe a busted play. He still was able to gain about three yards out to the 42-yard line. Going to bring up second and seven for the Panthers. That's that mysterious number 12. We don't know who he is. If we can uh, get something going on offense tonight, I think this game's going to come down to can we force some turnovers on our defensive side of the ball because right now power football is something we're not able to stop against this team. They got that same wide out here. Looks like maybe going on a deep pattern again. Oh. He's still on his feet. He ran 25 yards across the field and gained three. Yeah, yeah. They, they were trying to set something up over here. Looked like number one was dropping back. I thought they were going to throw and double pass it, but he, they never did it. They, never went, they all went the other way with it. Alec Colburn blew through the line on that play, the linebacker number 42, but he's coming up. It looked like his arm's injured. Well, they're gonna, the trainer's going to take a look at him on the sideline. Let's hope Alec's all right because he's been a big penetration guy, sack guy all year long for the Wolverines. Panthers come up to the line. It's about the 45-yard line. they got to get almost to the 50, a long four for the first down. Quarterback wants to keep there it, and they go. stuff him finally. Nice job. He's still on his feet, though. And he lost a few more yards because of it. Great job by the defense there. It all started on that right side of the line. I see Josh Salo and Alex Shaw. Look like an all-out blitz to the right side. I think the Wolverine coaching staff made a great play call right there. They knew what was coming. Tanner Bridges is back deep for the Wolverines to receive the punt. Stands on about his 22-yard line. Hopefully we'll get some of the best field position we've had all night. Hunter Thornton is in to kick, I think is who that is. Oh, Oh. almost blocked. We almost had some real good field position. Yeah, they were close on that one. (laughs) And the ball went out of bounds at the 24-yard line, so the Wolverines will have first and 10 in their own territory at the 24. Parkview started off hot tonight. They've played, played real well, but it's time for West to get back in it right now. They've made use of this no-huddle offense all year, West Forsyth, and um, I think they're going to try to pick up the tempo a lot right here. Oh, there it is. There's Wysorek around the corner. He's at the 30. He's at the 35 and run out of bounds at the 37, 38-yard line. That's the. I think that's the first first down of the game for the Wolverines. That's one of about literally – Ten variations of the sweep that West Forsyth runs in Parkview. They, I think we tricked them a little bit. They thought we were going to the left side. And Jacob just had a lot of running room over here on the bottom of your screen. Ball sits at the 38-yard line, first and 10. A.J. back to pass, rolls to his right, wants to throw. He's caught. He's still on his feet. He runs out of bounds at about the line of scrimmage. No gain. They were looking to throw the screen to Wazork. And Wazork got chipped coming through the right side of your line. A.J. saw him almost fall down, so he just tucked it and ran. Wolverines without a huddle going quickly, trying to increase the pace of the game. There's A.J. He's at the 45. He's at the 50. He's down to the 45, still down at the 43-yard line into Parkview territory. Now, this is what we're used to. This West Forsyth offense is average, averaging 300 yards rushing a game. The two leading rushers, quarterback Erdely and the do-everything slot back Wazorik. Those two guys right now are picking them t- 
10 yards at a time. Let's keep it going, West Forsyth. Looks like if they do quick hitters, they're doing better. If they try to string it out, this uh, what the Parkview team can, can get over to the sidelines quicker. Yeah, you're right, Johnny. Adam Clack, offensive coordinator, he's got his work cut out for him tonight. It's going to be a AJ, chess match. Quick pass. It looked oh. like it was blocked. It got tipped at the line. Yeah, it got hit somewhere. I think number 28, right defensive end, got a hand on it. That's Hunter Thornton. We've called his name a few times tonight already. Second and 10 after the incomplete pass. A.J. Quick handoff to Trevor O'Brien. Gets about three yards, two, three yards. (laughs) I like that from Tanner Bridges. He got maybe a little bit of after the whistle activity, but he popped right up, tapped the guy on the shoulder, told him a good block. Now Tanner's another guy who's come up big in the passing game this year, and I wouldn't be surprised to see us throw it to him right now. Third and long. Wysorek has the ball, turns the corner at the 40, stopped right there. Well, you're just inside the 40. Is it four down territory, or do you try to pin Park View deep? I think you probably punt this early in the game, but think that's what I do. They're going to line early up in shotgun. and yeah. if, Well, a lot of times this year, Johnny Early's just done a little quick kick if they don't put somebody deep. We may see that on this play. Oh, and there we go. They got the flag. That's what he was trying to do. Got him to jump. Now we're going to go for it. Looks it, like the left tackle on the uh, defensive line jumped. Going to bring up what? Fourth and about Fourth a and foot. about a foot. Yeah, it's not enough for the first down, but it's going to make it really close. Well, part view has really dominated the line on the inside running game. So I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a little play action here or some misdirection. Fourth and inches for the Wolverines. Let's see what they can do. A.J. is up underneath the center. He hurries up and snaps it. Parkview's not ready. A.J. got it. He popped through for three yards. You know, when I played high school football, when I saw there was no linebackers, I used to love to run that play because you just got to squirt through. And Parkview brought all seven guys and put them on a line of scrimmage that time. They were in a, a 7-4 defense. Ball sits at the 33-32 yard line. A.J. shotgun. Back to pass. Good blocking. He's out of the pocket. He's not still on his feet. He's got a flag on the play, though. A little extracurricular there. It's the same guy, too, Johnny, number four from Parkview. He's on fire right now. Yeah, Justin Rosser. There's a penalty back in the defensive backfield of a Parkview, so I don't know what it is. Yeah, they're going to call it holding. Like it could be a hold on Parkview. It yeah. is. It yeah. is. He Let's has go, it, Johnny. Yeah, we had to tight end trying to run a crossing route, and the linebacker grabbed him by the shoulder pad and spun him around. You don't get that called very often in high school football, but we probably got a a good crew here tonight in the sweet 16 of the playoffs. Ten-yard penalty from the point of the foul. Hey, we'll take it. That's that's automatic. I think it's an automatic first down also. They stepped off eight yards from the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening here. I think it's supposed to be 10 yards and an automatic first down. But the rules have gotten to where they're different between college and high school and pros. I don't even try to memorize all of them. I think think what's going to happen is they're going to move the change. It's going to be first down and 10 from the 25-yard line. So I think what the referee is trying to... Boy, last week we had all kind of penalties. We had just... A buku of them. They were offense, a lot of the offensive penalties on on West for South last week. It's something that's been haunting them for three weeks, Johnny. The false starts and offsides. Hopefully they can put an end to it. AJ has the ball. Dropped down at the 21-yard line. First down. So that was a first and two. Yeah, I, I, I'm confused because if you called defensive holding, I would think it would have been past the line of scrimmage. 
I don't yeah. know. Is it a five-yard penalty? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't all know. we know now is that the ball sits at the 22-yard line. It's first and ten for the Wolverines, and A.J.'s up underneath the center. Well, if you're at home, just Google it. Oh, wow. Jake's brought down quickly in the backfield. Loss of about eight yards on that. That's big number 44, Micah Finley. Probably their best defensive lineman. Well, he came through. Nobody touched him. That's a good, good-looking football player. Second and 18 from the 30-yard line. It's like timeout for Parkview. Well, tonight's game on ListenYourWay.com is presented by the Allstate Chapman Agency and Dean Chevrolet, Amos Pump Service, and your Forsyth County Marathon stations. Save 4% when you use your Marathon cash card now through December 31st. That's like saving 12 cents a gallon. Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Travis Chaffins, do you have any updates for us? Checking some scores. Also in the uh, Class 6A bracket, Brookwood leading Mill Creek 14-7 in the first quarter. North Cobb ahead of Hughes, 14-7, also in the first quarter. And in the first quarter, Camden County leading East Coweta, 7-0. The winner of tonight's game between West Forsyth and Parkview advancing to the winner of Colquitt County and Noonan. No updates on that yet, but we will have that for you later in the broadcast. I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch, but I really would like to play Colquitt County next week. I've been a fan of Rush Probe since back in his – Hoover days. I've been to a few of his clinics. One of those guys that coaches with his hair on fire all the time. I just want to watch him on the sideline. Second and 18 for the Wolverines. I think AJ's waiting for the whistle from the uh, head umpire. There it is. A.J. back to pass, rolling to his right. Quick pass. Nice. Caught and hit hard, but that's a great pass. Wow. Great job of hanging on to the football from Jacob Wazork. You didn't need the whole 18 there. You just needed a chunk of it, and we got the chunk we needed. Now let's put something together and get a first down. 14-yard pass and completion up to the 16-yard line. Third and four for the Wolverines. A.J., Shotgun, rolls to his right. He's cut through Great all the job. way down. Looks like he's got enough for the first down. I've been cringing all year long when A.J. would tuck it and run, thinking, man, we can't get this guy hurt. Hey, but the, at this point, you either win or go home. So, A.J., run it, buddy. Run it all you want. It's going to be first and 10 from just outside the 10-yard line, so they can get a first down. Wyzorek around the side at the 10, at the run out of bounds at horse about the five line, and a horse yeah. collar. <laughs> a good run there. Didn't look like he had much at all. He's a guy that, Johnny, it seems like he's got a fifth and sixth gear that he just kicks in sometimes, gets that corner. Yeah, he does. And just when you think you got him contained, he'll cut it back. And I noticed on that play they had great pursuit almost to the point of over-pursuing. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Jake cut one back before the night's over, take it to the house. He's done it all year long. But we got to punch this thing in right here. All right, so the ball sits at the three-yard line. Is that an automatic first down? It is. going to be first and goal. First and goal from at the three. AJ's up under the center. Wants to throw. He's oh. got, oh, he's wide open. He's going to cut it in. Touchdown, Touchdown, Wolverines. There are no flags on the field, so Wolverines come back. Twenty-four. Good drive there by West Real good drive. 76 yards. Ate up a lot of time on the clock. That may be a key factor now. The, long, the more West South can hold the ball, keep it away from Parkview. 42 seconds to go in this first quarter now. Timmy Hartshorn for the point after. 
Here's the snap. Kick is up. And it's good. We have a tie ball game here in the den. 42 seconds left in the first quarter of play. Parkview wants to regroup, I think, a little bit after that. They didn't think uh, we were going to be able to do that to them. Yeah, after the first series, we thought they looked like they were going to stop them. But this this series, of course, a couple of penalties helped too on that drive. But that, but West did a great job of moving the ball down the field. All right, Cano Mole and Bryce Lewis are back deep for the Panthers. Timmy Hartshorn is going to be kicking off for the first time tonight. Let's see if his foot is doing what it's been doing all year long. Even looking at the up guys that Parkview has on kickoff return, they are a big, good-looking bunch. Or was it Will Brown? That was Momo. It was Momo. Number three came up with the fumble. Well, Momo Kamara just got some momentum for West Forsyth. They tied it up. And now, great field position with an offense that was already firing on all cylinders. We got the ball on the 28-yard line. If you can punch this one in, it's going to be a big change of, change of things. Looked like Parkview was dominating the first five or six minutes of the ball game, and now things are turning around. All right, first and 10 in Panther territory. The ball is at the 28-yard line. A.J. up underneath the center. He's got the ball. He wants to throw it. Throws it deep. Yes, sir. Beautiful pass there. That was. Shades of David Green from the University of Georgia with that play fake. That was a great play action fake from A.J., just enough time for number 21 for West Forsyth. Who was it? Brian Porter wide open down there on the corner out. Made a great catch at the end. Well, just like that, in less than a minute, we're back at the three-yard line. Third, uh, 22 seconds, 21 seconds left in the quarter. First and goal. West Forsyth went to the huddle there. They, they're going to let that clock run. Like you said, Johnny, they want to control the football. Not something we've used to, we're used to seeing this year. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter of play, it looks like. Well, after one quarter of play, your score is 7-7. Wolverines and Panthers giving you a good show tonight. It's been a highly entertaining game. Both squads are... Well, well represented out there, and it's going to be a tough one all the way through. We've got a really good crowd out here tonight, considering that this is an off week for the school systems. Parkview looks like they've brought everybody. Their side of the field is full. And uh, this keeps up. We're going to have to stand the rest of the game because the cr crowd in front of us keeps yeah. standing up. I'm having to watch a computer screen some over here. <laughs> I keep forgetting to look at the TV. It's two feet in front of me. My little nephew plays for the Wolverines, and he had to go to football practice yesterday on Thanksgiving Day. My mom said, you mean they're making you practice on Thanksgiving? I said, Mama, they're in the Sweet 16 looking to 
make the state championship run. Of course they're practicing on Thanksgiving. And we do have a good crowd here tonight. Yeah, reminder that the NFL plays on Thanksgiving. So That's right. Momo. Momo Kamara. Face mask. Touchdown. <laughs> is that, is that the first time he's going off the answers? Yes, sir. Yeah. I didn't know if he'd done that before. He didn't last week, any of What they've done this year, Johnny, is when they're in a couple of the tight games, they did it to start the year against Gainesville. They did it against Chattahoochee some and a little bit against Alpharetta. When they get down inside the 10-yard line, you'll see Moe at tailback because he just got a nose for the end zone, and he's a big, strong kid. They put an extra tackle in there, too, one of their defensive linemen, Josh Davis, and they just uh, they say, we're going to power the football over you. Yeah, that looked good. Then. Took it to the house. All right, Hartshorn on for the extra point. Snap is down. It's good. Kick is good. Well, here we are just nine seconds into the second quarter, and your Wolverines have taken the lead 14 to nothing. 14 to 7. Sorry, 7. <laughs> My mistake. But they scored 14 unanswered points and looked good there. That's right. There's been a big swing in momentum in the last two, three minutes of this ball game, and that's what turnovers will do for you. If you watch much football at all, it doesn't matter what level you're at. If you turn the ball over this point in the season in the playoffs, it bites you in the butt a lot. Now West Forsyth just needs to protect the football and keep doing what they're doing. Hopefully we can play some strong defense again. Because I guarantee you this thing is a long, long way from over. 11.51 to go in the half, and I'm sure Parkview is going to come out fired up on offense this drive. You know, they'll use their speed, I'm sure, with a lot of trick plays. They've done a lot of formations already. All right, Hartshorn to kick off. Still on his feet, still driving all the way out to the 30-yard line. That was Bryce Lewis. And Mo Kamara makes a tackle again. So Mo got the fumble on the last kickoff. They put him in. He scored a touchdown. He makes this tackle. He knows that it's his time to shine right now. Was he projected to play in college linebacker? Uh, you know, Steve Spurrier has got that spur position at South Carolina that's like a linebacker safety hybrid, and they have recruited him specifically to play the spur spot. Oh, okay. Because he's a little, you know, undersized for linebacker, and he's pretty big for a safety. Now the part view's got an eye formation. Number six, Shaq Vereen. Moe's one of those guys, Johnny, that on paper he runs about a 4-6, 40-yard dash. But when the ball snap, I don't care what his time is. He plays football like you're supposed to. Gain of three brings up second down and seven for the Panthers. Ball sits at the 33-yard line. Now they're back in a regular. And all that now they're in the shotgun again. There we go. Number four keeps oh. the ball, gets around the outside. May have, I, a, may have a block there. I see a flag yeah, yeah, down yeah, at the 29-yard line. That's a block or a hold one, I think, on the offense. That little number four, Small. Justin Rosser, he's playing corner for him on defense. They had him in a the wildcat there. Listed at 5-6 on the roster, I got. A junior, but he's a heck of a football player. Yeah, he's got some speed. I thought he was going to go for a five-yard loss, and he turned it into a three-yard game, but the flag's going to get him. They run a different formation almost every play. They have. I feel like I'm watching Steve Spurrier in a game where he can't move the ball. You know, he he's not scared to draw something in the sand right in the middle of the game. I don't know what you call that formation they had there other than a wildcat bunch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they don't use a quarterback, but sometimes they won't even have a quarterback in there. All right, after the penalty, the ball is now at the 19-yard line. That's going to bring up a second down and 21 for the Panthers. 
And looks like we got officials a officials got a time here on John, the clock's not working or what's going on? Johnny, when we played South, I guess three, four weeks ago, they had an injury to their starting quarterback, and I bet their backup quarterback probably didn't take ten snaps under center. So West has seen this Wildcat a lot this year. Mm-hmm. From South and Lambert too ran it quite a <clears> bit. I think they were checking the clock to make sure everything was right. All right, here we go again. About second down, 21 for the Panthers. Got double wides over here this side, too, isn't it? And he wants to throw this way. Great job. Shuffle pass. Number four has the ball. He's got some room. Oh, <laughs> and he's hit hard. Ooh, nice job. I lost track of that when everybody stood up. Yeah, ja- <laughs> Jacob Hill, the corner I mentioned who, had, who was – Uh, He may have been leading the team in tackles when he got hurt about a month ago. He kept his backside containment that time and laid a lick on number four. What, he gained about two yards, John? Uh, It's going to bring it third down and about 18, so three yards after all of that. You got to give credit to uh, the safety on that play, too, from West Versailles. Josh Gordon did a great job of coming over the top with that, that double stack formation Parkview had. And Spart- court- Spartview's second timeout. They're feeling the pressure right now. They don't want to give West Forsyth the ball back at this point, the way that they're moving it on these last two drives. See Jacob Hill down here right in front of me on the sideline. He's got that ankle foot heavily taped, and they're using him sparingly. It's almost like they're rotating Will Brown, young Kendall Phillips, and Jacob just try to keep him as fresh as possible. But it's a big boost to this defense to have him back tonight. And they've stepped it up tonight. Well, if they can can maintain the lead, they're going to use him less and less. They want to take care of him to take him to next week. Third down, 18 for the Panthers. Big play for the Wolverines if they can stop them here. Unknown number 12 wants to pass. He's under some pressure. There we go. Caught from behind. Great job. Aleph Chaw, outside yeah. linebacker, number seven. Now he impressed me last week. He had a real good game last week. Yeah, I went, I went in the locker room and talked to the coaches before they started warming up, and he was – one of their worries tonight, he's been a little bit under the weather the last three days, and I was scared because he's come up big this year. Yeah, he had, he had a great game last, last yeah, week. Came up big right there. That was, I mean, he had a lot of room to run if we had not got him in the backfield. Tanner Bridges back deep for the Wolverines. Stands at about his 45-yard line awaiting to punt from the Panthers. Get away from it. Great field position. The ball is still rolling. It's going to stop at about the 41, 42-yard line. So the Wolverines with real good position at their own 42-yard line. Nine minutes, 18 seconds left in the first half. Let's see if the Wolverines can uh, enhance their lead here. Well, when you got them on the ropes... Do you keep them on the ropes or do you throw the big uppercut here? Oh, that was in the backfield there. Oh, we may have got a face, a face mask. mask. Looks like number 13, Dubose. It is a face mask. Sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good. Well, oh, that was number 12. Oh, he's, he's back in there. He's on defense, too. He pointed, though, to us. Hmm. No, it's on them. Maybe he made a mistake, but it sure looked like he pointed at the Wolverines. Because look at the look at the Panthers; they're yep. all pointing. They yeah. they stiff armed and grabbed his face mask. May have, yeah, it may have been the offensive guy. Well, that's going to be a big one because it was seven yards deep in the backfield. Nothing could do much on that one. They had him the time he got the ball. Well, if this is, ooh, yep, yep. If it's incidental, it's only five yards. 
We hope it's five yards. Are we going to be looking at a first and 30? First and forever, yeah. <laughs> Having a little trouble tonight assessing their penalties. Their coaches are screaming, decline it, but can you decline a face mask? I guess you can. They want to take the loss and put the it loss on the second and down. The down, yeah. Face mask, decline. Yeah, I guess uh, okay. So, six yard loss. I mean, I'm actually glad they declined it if it was a 15 yard. <laughs> yeah. Well, it must have been. It must have been a five yard. Uh, otherwise, yeah. it seems to me they would have taken 15 mm-hmm. yards. Second and 16. AJ back in the pocket to pass. Dumps it out Great over the play center. Great play call. At the 50, slips down. Jake all the way to the 45 yard line, though. I think I would have taken the penalty. <laughs> That's why they pay Coach Clack the big bucks there. That was a great, he hadn't called a screen all night long, and he called it at the perfect time. So oh, that turned into a 19-yard play. Wolverines in Panther territory. They put the ball down just outside the 45-yard line, first and 10 for the Wolverines. A.J., shotgun. Rolls to his left. Wants to throw. Wide open. Oh, oh he caught it. He caught that. Yes, sir. Wow. 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 What a great catch by Jake Weizorek. I've been singing his praises all year long, but number 10, Jacob Weizorek, he I, I'll just say it, he's the best high school football player I've ever watched play. He may not be the biggest, the fastest, but he just gets it done. I mean, if you're Parkview and you see a hit like that and they still just get up and got a first down and keep going, the Wolverines are just... And for those of you that don't know, Jacob, you should see his report card. That's the best part about him. I think he sits with about a 4.6. There he is. Jake Weizorg again. He's at the 20. He's down at the 15-yard line. The 20-yard run by Jake Weizorg. Jake is set to play football next year at Johns Hopkins University on a full academic scholarship. They may be getting one of the better football players to ever walk through that school. First and 10 from the 15 for the Wolverines. Wysorek again looking for somewhere to to cut. He cuts at the, uh, there's a flag. Flag down at about the 11-yard line. Jake got about six yards on that, but let's see what the penalty is. Looked like in the area of holding, and it is holding. Yep. That's going to push the ball back to about the 21, 22 yard line. I think they still have first down. Well, so far it's been the, the AJ and Jake show. So now let's see if AJ can hit us a pass downfield, pick up this first down we, or a touchdown. They stepped off 10 yards from the point of the infraction, so that's going to be a first and 17 for the Wolverines with the ball at the 22-yard line. A.J. quickly dumps it off. Well, if I'm giving stars out, you give, was that Trevor O'Brien in the backfield? Or was it number 30? The tailback picked up. It was number 30 that was in for Trevor. Stephen Gallagher. They had an all-out blitz up the middle, and he chipped him just enough that A.J. could escape her. He would have been sat. Gain of about 12, second down and four. It was close to the first down. Maybe Momo time. Here he comes. Momo and Big Josh Davis, the defensive tackle, who comes in with Mo usually when they run this jumbo goal line package. Trevor O'Brien gained about a yard on that play, so it's third down and three. Ball's at the 13-yard line. We're going to call it Momo time when he comes in. Yeah, last week they were never in this position. They scored way out. That's right. 66 points last week. A.J. rolling to his left. Oh, Oh, no, no, it bounced. Uh, It bounced. It's one of those passes that's the hardest pass to throw when there's nobody around the guy. Tough right. luck. Fourth down. We're going to call timeout here. They're going to bring in the kicking unit. 
Yeah, I'll take three points. Timmy Hartshorn, tough break. I think A.J. didn't have – he thought he had less time than he did. But this is a big three points if we can tack it on. He's going to kick from about the 14, 15-yard line, 25-yard. Well, and good. it is good. 6.44 to go in the second quarter, 17-7. Travis, you got any updates for us on some scores around? Absolutely. In the first quarter, Colquitt County leading Noonan 12 to nothing. The winner of tonight's game will face the winner of that game. Other scores in Class 6A, it is Norcross leading South Gwinnett 14 to nothing in the second quarter. Also, Camden County ahead of East Coweta 14 to nothing in the second quarter. All right, Keanu Mole and Bryce Lewis back deep again for the Panthers. Hart Shorn getting ready to kick off after the field goal. Six minutes, 44 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Your Wolverines, 17. Panthers, 7. Good high kick, caught at about the one, two yard line. And he's brought down at about the 21, 22 yard line. Give Timmy Hart showing credit. That was a great kick. About as high and as far as you can kick it without getting it in the end zone. Caught that ball on the one and he gave his coverage team plenty of time to get down there. Keanu Mole ran it back. 20 yards, 21 yards. So the Panthers, let's see what they can do. First and 10 at their own 22-yard line. Back in, back in a regular formation here now, looks like. Now who's a quarterback? Well, no, that no. unknown number 12? Well, now they got it back there going to Wildcat again, aren't they? 12 has the ball. Hands off to number four. Hey, that roster has really got some speed as he got to the corner there. Yeah, he's a little bulldog. They list him at 5'6", 185 pounds. Probably being a little bit generous on his height and his weight, but he gives you everything he's got every time he touches a football. Well, he gained 11 yards on that, so that's a first down for the Panthers at the 33. And couldn't see who the runner was, but he was brought down only after a gain of one. Hey, those Maybe are, two. Those orange numbers are hard to see. They are. <laughs> it, I'm surprised. I think Parkview's got four or five guys going both ways. Yeah, they do. Big 6A school. You don't see that as often anymore. Usually one or two guys. But when you get to this point in the playoffs, win or go home. Second down and eight for the Panthers. Quick handoff. Slips. Good defense by the Wolverines there. Gain of about one or two out to the 37-yard line. It's going to bring up a third down and five. Another big play for the Panthers. They're continually switching about two, two backs every play. Different guys are in there each time. Big defensive play. Got flags on that. Going to be procedure on Parkview. Had a high snap, too, that time, but it didn't matter because the play had been blown dead. Well, that'll push the ball back to the 32-yard line. That's going to bring up third and 11 for the Panthers. That's a big play for West Forsyth. I'd like to even call a timeout here with 4.58 left in the half. We need to stop and get the ball back. They want to pass. He rolls to his left. 
Throws it. Oh, number seven. And wide number open. seven has the ball. That's going to be about a 30-yard pass reception for the Panthers. That's Rob Youngblood. He's listed as a quarterback and defensive back, but he was out there wide out then. I was saying I would have loved to have seen this call timeout there and talk to the secondary, try to make sure exactly what happened would not happen. But you need to stop them here with four minutes to go in the half. Ten-point lead is a lot prettier than a three-point lead. First and ten from the 39 in Wolverine territory are the Panthers. Hands off to number 42. He's around the right side, still on his feet driving. He's got a first down all the way down to the 29-yard line. Here Parkview's putting together a nice drive. Now that time they had two, looked like guards lined up in front of the two running backs. Kind of a weird formation. Clock continues to tick just under four minutes now. First and ten for the Panthers. Only they know who's the quarterback. See those two guys in the front of them are really linemen. Number 12 around the side. I'm just going to call number 12. We don't know his name. He's not on the roster. But he gained about seven, eight yards. Maybe that was strategic, putting somebody in at quarterback tonight that we don't know who he is. Maybe they're passing the jersey around in between plays. Number 12 is a famous Parkview jersey. Jeff Francoeur wore it. Clint Salmons wore it. They've had several big times. Maybe, maybe they brought it out of retirement yeah. tonight. It may be Frank Coor back there. Yeah. <laughs> well, they gained six yards, so it's second and four. The ball sits at the 23-yard line. Need a big play by the Wolverine defense. There That's we part go. of it. Cecil Flo, the head coach at Parkview, in his 20th season. I'm looking at the stat sheet, approaching 200 wins. So all these formations, the man knows what he's doing, obviously. You don't win 200 games in 20 years by luck. But hopefully West Forsyth can adjust. I'd love a big stop here. Third and a long three for Parkview. They basically abandoned the pass game. They're going all run, aren't they? And still on his feet. He got the first down and then some. He's down to the 15-yard line. Clock continues. Well, they stopped the clock to move the move the sticks. Two minutes, 27 seconds left in the first half. Parkview comes up to the line of scrimmage, first and 10, 25-yard line. Man in motion. Another handoff up the middle. Got another five yards. They're pounding the middle now, right now. They seem to have found a place that they think they can gain yards, and they're, they're doing it. Gain of five brings the ball down to about the 11-yard line, just outside the 10. They've basically done away with their wideouts and just brought in two linemen put in behind the two guards and they're just ramming it up the middle they're not nothing fancy at all now are they just power football second down and five right up the middle again he's still on his feet around the outside they almost had him back in the backfield but he slipped around looks like he got a first down I think First they are calling goal. it a first down, first and goal from the five-yard line. Minute 16 left, and they still got plenty of time, but they remember they only have one timeout left, too. Let's get a forced fumble or something here for the Wolverines. That's what they need. And they stopped him. I wouldn't be surprised to see West use some timeouts. Try to get the ball back and put some points on the board. Second and goal from the two-yard line. 57 seconds left in the half. How 
How about a turnover? Uh, he's in. Touchdown, Panthers. They just used a power formation all the way down the field that time. 17-13. That's one of those situations where Parkview says, we think we're stronger than you. We're just going to pound it down your throat, and it, it worked out for them on that drive. Coach T, the defensive coordinator, I'm sure he's going to draw something up at the half to put a stop to that if they try to just run it down in the field again. Oh, I didn't watch much film on Parkview this year, but. Tyler Stevenson for the extra point, and it's blocked. There we go. It's blocked. Okay. Big wow. play there. There we go. Good. Was that number five or 47? I don't know who got it. They got a good push there, though, to block the extra point. Well, with 44 seconds remaining in the first half, Wolverines hang on to a 17-13 lead over the Panthers. Let's see if the Wolverines are going to try and do anything with these 44 seconds or just let the uh, let the clock run out. We know all too well how big those extra points could be. <laughs> yes. The one loss on the Wolverines record this season against Chattahoochee was – they two, scored on a two-point conversion. Two-point conversion, yeah. And then we went overtime with Lambert, where we won by one point because they missed two-point conversion. So when you get into a tight ball game like this with two pretty evenly matched teams, that one point can be precious. 44 seconds. West Forsyth has all three timeouts left. Are they going to go conservative and... Go into the half with a lead, or are they going to come out in a two-minute offense or the 44-second <laughs> offense and try to see if we can put three more on the board or even seven? Will Brown and Jake Wysorek back for the Wolverines. Await the kick from... Eric Autry, I think, is kicking there. 29, is that him? They have two kickers. No, they one for field goals and one for he's got the He's got the ball angled like an onside kick almost. Yeah. We're, we're stepping Will Brown up, looking for a pooch kick on the 20. But I'd be surprised if they kick it to Will after last week. They tricked us. That ball may go out of bounds. Jake Wysorek with the ball. He's at the 20. He's brought down at the 25-yard line. There's a flag on the play. 37 call. seconds left. That's going to be a block in the back. Block in the back. It was. Yeah, I'm sure it was, yeah. That'll put him back deep the territory. Put it back about the 9-yard line if that's where the flag sits. That may kill any hope we had of trying to get in field goal range. If we've got to start from our 10-yard line. But you never know. A.J.'s got plenty of arm to throw one real deep, one or two real deep. Well, with 37 seconds left in the first half, ball sits at the 9-yard line. Some decisions to make here for Coach Hepler and Coach Clack about 91 yards to go. Tanner Bridges goes out wide. Hands off to Jake Wysorek, and he gets nothing. We're going to play conservative, which I don't blame him. I think that's what I'd do at this point. 25 seconds left. What was that, about a seven- or eight-minute drive from Parkview? Yeah, it was, Ed. It's got this, for a long time. Got this crowd quiet from west, so I think momentum has swung once more. We're just going to let the clock wind down. That was a great half of football. Well, that's it. First half of play is over here at the Den in Cumming, Georgia. The Wolverines have the lead 17-13 to over the Parkview Panthers. Tonight's game on ListenYourWay.com is presented by Andine Chevrolet, the Allstate Chapman Agency, your Forsyth County Mayor, 
Marathon Station is an Amos Pump Service specializing in residential and commercial properties. Amos Pump Service installs quality well pumps, water lines, and sewer and septic tanks. Call Amos Pump Service for a free consultation at 770-887-0414 or visit AmosPumpService.com. Now over to Travis Chaffins uh, with some halftime updates, and then after that we're going to, I don't know if the bands are playing or not tonight. So, Travis? All right. Thank Listen you. your way. Thank you, John. Checking some scores for you here at halftime. Uh, second quarter score, it is North Gwinnett leading Grayson 9-3. to Also in the second quarter, Mill Creek ahead of Brookwood 28-14. to Elsewhere around the state, it is Jefferson leading Westminster 21-7 to at the half. In the second quarter, Buford leading North Oconee 10 to nothing. North Hall is ahead of Morgan County 13-9 at the half. And it is the Gainesville Red Elephants trailing Kell 28-21 in the second quarter. This is Travis Chafin coming to you live from West Forsyth High School. And we appreciate you joining us for live playoff coverage here on ListenYourWay.com, WFHS-TV, and Play On Sports. We're going to leave the mics open for you here for a little while and see if we have a halftime performance. We're going to throw it to play on sports, and we will be back with second half action live from West Forsyth High School. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. That's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. 
prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. 316 left to go in this ballgame. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run this to the 5 10. Touchdown, Wolverines. How did that happen? That Jason was Snyder. Holy cow. He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from he Dion. He took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just. <laughs> Holy cow. Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40. Lucas Zinder with the game saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion, pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the and sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take, and there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sac Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30-24. to Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over. Dug by Holt. 
Giblin going back to Holt near side, cut shot, kept alive, back in one by Cathedral, and this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide, and the Cathedral Dons have won the title 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block. Robinson leading the break the other way. Gets it to Grant. Slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the Stag. Runner at third is Chavez. 8-2 to the score. Bottom of the seventh. The 1-2. Popped in the air, this should do it. Corda Posse says, it's mine. Now he's fading on it, and he can't make the catch, but Gaff comes in from center field and does. Congratulations to the St. Mary's Rams, a three-peat. They win it eight to two against Franklin to take the series two games to none. But this is time to run an offensive set that you've done all through the season in practice. Yeah, and you get, also, you know, you get it to your to your hottest player right now, just like they're getting it to Eichhorst right here. He's going to try to create some space, find somebody on the backside that's open. Eichhorst flush out to the right. Oh, breaks free of a player. Eichhorst on his own, shoots and scores, bounces the shot home. Kuz can't handle the shot. Eichhorst takes off the shirt and the helmet. And how about that? Alex called it. Eichhorst, after sustaining the injury in the third quarter of play, has scored the game winner with 22 seconds gone in the overtime period. Dog pile on the field. Marin Academy take it. A fantastic finish to this game. And, well, I hope his other ankle isn't hurting after this. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter, right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Helix! And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, (laughs) playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. Sophomore Chris Carter that's under center. In their tight wing formation, Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run, breaks through, four tackles, and now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Imperial, on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40 yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20 yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, oh Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64 yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the <laughs> as I look over to our partners at KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple of yards downfield. They hit him again near the goal line. Keep those Lowell fans quiet over there. Lum sets it up to Pang. Long, it's out. Low, a magnificent seven titles in the San Francisco section in dramatic style as they pull out a fantastic victory over a spirited Galileo Lions team. They win the fourth game, 31-29, and they take the 2012 Academic Athletic Association San Francisco section title. Officials say no five-second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side, Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it, 50-42. They lulled you to sleep, and then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way, and it is good. Good! St. Augustine has their first lead of the game 
21 to 20 with 25 seconds to play the senior McMorrow with a huge kick not the longest of his career but the biggest of his career oh, St. Geez. Augustine leads it 21 to already lining up they won't even have to run that one more play they just act yeah, yes why bother so there you have it your five-time defending Division Three champions, the Cathedral Catholic Dons, running up over and through Olympian, 41 to nothing here from Qualcomm Stadium. Patriots down 21-17. Great ball game here. Dylan taking it, looking right, throwing it up top to Gaines. It will be caught by Gaines. Oh my goodness. It looked like the defender had it, but Gaines stole it away from him. Jason Gaines, are you kidding me, my friend? Oh, boy. It looked like for sure we had an interception by the Tories, but as they both were going to the ground, Jason Gaines just wrestled it away from him. Shane Dillon to Jason Gaines on an 11-yard play. Fanchon in the game, now out, replaced by Hayashi, the libero for defense. Wenzel serve. Championship point, ball up in the air. Hayashi's gonna bring it back. Richards, deep one over and three. Free opportunity, look for Wallace, no, they go Becker. Hayashi, then tap over and two by Hollingsworth. Now look for Wallace, for the match! <laughs> Kathleen Wallace, no better way for the Bulls to finish it than giving it to their senior leader. 25-12, 25-15, and with eight straight points to close out their third straight D5 championship on a kill by Kathleen Wallace, 25-21 in game three. Branson has won the D5 title. To the backfield, it's Hernandez and Northcutt. Set to throw is Thomas, has time, goes for the home run. It's intercepted in the end zone. Seemed like it, they tried to go to Martin and Martin slipped. Stockton, Hilmar, and Escalon. That's going to do it, folks. Victory formation taking Neil. The clock comes out. The clock will tick down. The players jumping up at midfield. I think I see a, a Gatorade. Did, did we have a Gatorade shower? Uh, we most certainly did. Casey Taylor getting the shower there. Very much deserved. Down to 12. Great tackle there by Ronald Williams there to make the stop for Helix. And the Helix fans are starting to celebrate here. This is going to be the final play. Five seconds. Pow Pow will hand it off. And they're going to get in the end zone touchdown. That's Keegan who gets in, but that's going to be the end of the ball game. 44 to 6 will be the score. So Oceanside scores on the final play of the ball game. And gets a consolation prize just to, to make this is kind of say that hey we didn't get shut out so 44 to 6 is your score and helix is celebrating on the sideline oceanside streak of seven straight championship games has been ended two minutes and five seconds left on the clock clock rolling third down and 15 for the patriots dylan he's got time steps up He's going to chuck it deep. He's got a man open. Seth Collins with a diving catch. He hauls it in at the 25. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you, right there, Dylan goes to show why he is a Division I prospect as he's able to step up, elude the pressure, see Collins down the field, and make the connection. As I'll tell you right now, there has not been a bigger catch for Seth Collins this entire season. Fans nervously wait on the far side. Trips right. Vernon, the lone receiver to the left. Troy Zine rolls right. Here we go. And he's going to be... Oh, he gets away, but can't get away from the second slew. Vacaville takes over on downs, and the crowd erupts. So it's the sideline. Got to watch it. Got to watch the sideline yeah, here. Yeah, they Remember, really they were up 35-26. Two unanswered touchdowns. That's going to do it, folks. Your 2011 Division II Sac Joaquin section champions, the Vacaville Bulldogs, they went 39-35 in a classic. Although they have no timeouts, they'll get the ball on the sideline, try to set something up. They can get a couple dribbles and a shot. I tell you what, that was a gutsy call there. 
by Coach Aguiar. Oh, what a shot! I tell you what, Javier Kirksey from well beyond the three-point mark takes the inbound pass, throws it up off the glass, and nails a three. And you've got the finish to this Cinderella story as the Ridgeview Wolfpack win the Division Three boys title 43 to 40. And what Caroline a Martin to serve. Can is third time the charm for Palo Alto. Martin over, dug by Irvin. Lauren, backside, Bedard, Ghani, long, and that's the ball game. And Palo Alto comes from behind. They were down 13-8 in game five. They win it 17-15. Koenig, who will continue to play baseball at the next level. He is going to Central Arizona. About 45 minutes outside Phoenix and Coolidge. This pitch is hit in the 5-5 hole. Nice grab and throw over to first base. Ori Wofford. Full extension dive to his right and gets Tillinghast by a step. Three-point game. Down to five seconds. 316 left to go. 316 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's gonna run this to the five, ten, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow. He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from He Dion. took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just. <laughs> Holy cow. Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion, pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown. Bird goes 38 yards. Give me the sign, though. And welcome back to live playoff coverage of the second round of the Georgia High School Association State Playoffs. Class 6A, the West Forsyth Wolverines hosting the Parkview Panthers tonight. Wolverines ahead 17-13 to 13 at the half. Tonight's game, a presentation of ListenYourWay.com, WFHS-TV, and Play On Sports. Tonight's game is brought to you by Andine Chevrolet, your Forsyth County Marathon stations. Amos Pump Service, and the Allstate Chapman Agency. Now with your second half play-by-play -play call is John White, Andy Coleman, and Johnny Talent. Well, Johnny, from where I'm sitting, I guess I'd have to say there hasn't been a whole lot of surprises tonight. It's been a great football game between two really good football teams, and uh, we knew that Parkview was going to bring one of the more athletically talented teams that West Forsyth has seen all year. And it's shown, and it really showed on the last drive where Parkview just came out and powered the football down the field for about an eight-minute drive. Yeah, they did two different things. Well, they did a lot of different things, a lot of different formations. But the first couple of drives, they took it down the field using their speed and kind of razzle-dazzle. And then that last drive, like I say, they just powered it and, you know, had Four running backs and, you know, run it, run it straight up the middle and really look good. But now, overall, West's offenses look good, too. And, of course, they took advantage of a couple of breaks and drove in to score and lead 17-13, but by, that's sure not a, not a sure lead. So they still got some work to do. Yeah, I want to say if I had to guess in this second half, it's going to boil down to how many possessions can West Forsyth get the football. 
they want to touch it as many times as possible with this explosive offense. And um, Parkview, you know they're going to want to just keep pounding, pounding, pounding. And I think the difference in the game to this point is the one turnover where Parkview fumbled the kickoff return. Otherwise, they'd probably be in the lead. That's true. Parkview is going to receive in the start of this second half, so we should see if the uh, West South makes some adjustments on, on their defense. They need to do something from that last drive. They, they wouldn't able to stop them at all. Timmy Hartshone set to kick deep for the Wolverines. Hartview with their two guys back deep. Yeah, if it's the same, it's uh, Ke- Keanu Mole, Bryce back. Lewis. He's back in the end zone, so it's a touchdown back to the 20. That's what I like to see. That way I don't have to worry about them breaking one. Just take care of business on the kick, kick it in the end zone. We did find out number 12 is Rob Youngblood. He's listed as number seven on our program, but he said he'd come back from an injury, and they gave him number 12. So Rob Youngblood is the quarterback number 12. Whether he's lined up that way this time or not, I think he. I don't know whether they're going to come under center or they're back. Now he's back in the shotgun, looks like. All right, first and 20, or first and 10 at the No, 20. he's under center. <laughs> yeah. Hands off, and the Wolverines get him for a loss. Nice job. Of four yards. That was Justin Rosser trying to come around in number four, and he didn't gain a whole lot. Bunch of. Gold helmet shining around that football. That was great pursuit by the Wolverine defense. Not a four-yard loss there, wasn't it? It is. Second and 14. Ball sits at the 16-yard line for the Panthers. You kind of wonder why they went away from that. Yeah. <laughs> well, now they're back in the in a, in a wildcat a little bit, but they got two wide outs. Young blood wants to pass, rolling to his right, stops, throws it down the middle. There oh, it is. in and out of the hands. Ooh, good defense by Hunter Ballou there. Well, there's a little somewhat of a smash route with a little hitch route, and then he had a corner over the top. And I'm really glad that he didn't throw that flagger out because he was wide open. Maybe the safety broke on the pass, and I just missed his coverage, but um, – I'm with you, Johnny. Why are they not running the Wildcat again? I mean, they ran that Wildcat with those two guys up front, like, you know, two blocking backs, and they moved it, but they went away from that formation. Because they they didn't have any wide outs. Now they're using two wide outs and a wing back now. So they're spread out again like they were early in the game. Third and 14, handoff to number six. He's he's hit hard in the backfield. Wow, what a play by the defense. Wow. Was that number seven, I believe? That was Aleph Chaw. That was a big-time play. Sometimes coaches just almost outthink themselves. But this is the offense like they started off with. Yeah. They had some success early with it, but then West kind of stopped them, and then they went to the other one. I don't know. We're going to get some good field position if we can field this punt. Loss of one, fourth and 14th. Fourth and fourth, fourth and fifteen. Whoo! Almost blocked. I believe before the night's over, we're gonna get one of them. Hey, I like that from Tanner Bridges. He showed no fear on that line drive kick. He fielded it without fair catching it, and actually picked up an extra yard or two. And we're gonna have the ball inside Parkview territory. I want to give a shout out to Tanner's grandfather, who he's at home, is unable to come to the games. Through the courtesy of Play on Sports, we're going to be sending him uh, a couple of DVDs of last week's game and tonight's game. Hope he enjoys that. Wolverines first and ten at the Panther 43-yard line. I feel that like West hasn't had the football in an hour. <laughs> AJ right up the middle, about three yards down to the 40-yard line. Well, if that final drive by Parkview to end the half is any indication of what they'll do later, West Forsyth needs to make the most of every possession they can get, especially when they get this kind of field position. Jake Wysorek still on his feet at the 30. Good run. Keeps on his feet, drives all the way down to the 24-yard line. Well, I don't know how Jacob does it. He can't weigh more than 170 pounds. He is one tough cookie. Breaking tackles left and right. 
Ball's eventually put down at the 26-yard line, first and 10 for the Wolverines. A.J. keeping the ball, running to his right. Runs out of bounds. Uh-oh. Late hit. Uh-oh. Late hit, and they yeah. did throw the flag. They threw it. A.J. was hit so hard he almost was on the track. I see Coach Clack barking at those officials. Hey, protect my quarterback. Unnecessary roughness. The ball is at the 25-yard line, so that's going to put it half the distance, the 12-and-a-half-yard line. Hey, the, they play just about everybody both ways. Their number 12 is in there both ways. Play a lot of people both ways. They do. It's surprising to me. Maybe we can wear them down. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's a factor you see a lot when, you, when you're playing good football teams. If West can keep two platooning, they'll definitely have their feet under them a little more than part of you come fourth quarter time. And we've seen West run away in the fourth quarter a lot this year. Ball is at the 12-and-a-half-yard line, first and 10 for the Wolverines. Quick handoff to Jake Wysorek. He's around the side, gets hit, hit again, and he may have uh, lost a yard on that. Some great pursuit from Parkview, reminiscent of the Lambert game a few weeks ago where they were just pursuing that sweep like crazy. And I kept calling for some sort of reverse. Maybe Coach Clack listened to me, and he's going to throw one at him some point. A.J. wants to throw, rolls to his right, and he keeps the ball. Yeah, he's got he's at the 10, and he jumps out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. You're going to give him the 9, maybe. So what's this going to bring up fourth down? Or is it it's third and seven third. at the 10-yard line? He's got room to get a first down. We need to make the three, live just past the three for the first it's a long seven for the Wolverines. Jake back to pass. A little pressure. Dumps it off. He's still on his feet Ooh. driving. Gets down to the, the six-yard line. I think they'll go for the field goal again here. Yeah, especially up by four points with a blocked extra point earlier. So this three-point is, is huge right here. You can go up by seven. Hart Shorn's going to be kicking from the near hash line. He's putting the ball down at the 15-yard line, so it'll be a 25-yard attempt. Wind is blowing across the field. Tough angle, yeah, with the wind blowing from his right to his left. Kick is up, and it's good. Yes, sir. It is good. Three more points for the Wolverines, making your score 20-13 to 13 with 8 minutes and 11 seconds left in the third quarter. Tonight's game on ListenYourWay.com is presented by Amos Pump Service, Andine Chevrolet, your Forsyth County Marathon stations, and the Allstate Chapman Agency. Are you in good hands? Get a quote today on your home and auto insurance from Kim Chapman at the Allstate Chapman Agency and receive a complimentary copy of West Forsyth Football Program. That's the Allstate Chapman Agency at 770-346-9377. Email is kimchapman at allstate.com or visit their website at allstatechapmanagency.com. Travis, before we uh, get a kickoff, you got any updates? I sure do. All right, John, it is Colquitt County leading Noonan. Uh, that was 15-14. to 14. That was a second quarter score, and we'll have some more scores for you later in the broadcast. Back to you, John. Piano Mole and Bryce Lewis back deep. Awaiting the kickoff from Timmy Hartshorn. Well, Johnny, if you're part of you, how do you not come back to that Wildcat? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Another long kick in the end zone. That a boy, Timmy. That's one of the deeper kicks we've seen out of him all year long. Timmy's adrenaline is uh, pumping. He kicked that three, four yards deep into the end zone, so... That'll be a touchback. Panthers will come out at their own 20-yard line. Just under four minutes into the second half of play, 20-13. to 13. Let's see what the Panthers can do on this possession. They're in the Wildcat. 
They still got a wide out though, not same, not that same formation they had last time going down the field. Good job by Mo Kamar to string it out. Gain of about three yards on that sweep. Out to the 22 and a half yard line, brings up a second and a long seven. Richard Walker on the carry there. Number four keeps the ball, squirts through for a couple more yards out to about the 27-yard line. Rosser with the carry. He's had a pretty good night. He has. The way Rosser runs that football, when they load up the backfield with those lead blockers you were talking about earlier, it's, that's a hard play to stop. And he came out, take a breather. As low as he is to the ground, I imagine it would be really hard to tackle him. Yeah. Now, right. they're, now they're back in that formation. See the two linemen in front of them. The Notre Dame box. Third and three. little confusion in the backfield. He squirts through. He's still on his feet up to the 37, 38. That's Vereen. Shaq Vereen. It really does look like the old Notre Dame box formation. Sure does. Those two blockers right in front of them. They, they clear some holes. They're basically abandoning the pass altogether when they go to that formation. They brought the ball out to the 37-yard line, first and 10 for the Panthers, still in Wolverine territory. And the Wolverines aren't surprised on that play, a gain of one. What they've done, I got, I can get a little better look with them in midfield is the pistol formation that's gotten so popular in recent years, Nevada, University of Nevada runs it, and they lead the nation in rushing over and over. They're running the pistol with the two, like you said, the two big guard-looking lead blockers standing right in front of the quarterback. It'd be interesting to talk to a West coach to see if they had game plan for this. Second and nine for the Panthers. They didn't go to this till late in the second quarter, did they, or midway through the second quarter? Yeah. Youngblood wants to pass, throws it over the middle, the ball's up. Oh, oh, good coverage there. Yeah, Josh Salo, the middle linebacker for West, number 49. I tease him at school sometimes that he gets some lucky interceptions, but you know what? He's in the right place at the right time an awful lot, and he almost had a big pick there. It's a big football play here. Third and nine. Youngblood wants to throw it again. Airs it out. Open receiver. Flag on the the play. Flags are flying all over the place. But that's going to be, what, 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. Pass interference on Will Brown. He, He never did turn. never could get turned around to see the ball. I think if he had got turned around... He had a chance to knock it down. That's the third or fourth time he's had that called on this year, Johnny. Will's a world-class sprinter. I don't know if you've heard about him or not. He's ranked in the top 20 in the nation in the 100 meters, and he just sometimes he doesn't trust his speed. He's, he's a guy that's fairly new to football, and um, he can run with anybody, but like you said, he oftentimes doesn't turn and look back at the ball. And that time he got a little nervous and grabbed a jersey. Well, after the penalty, that puts the ball inside Wolverine territory. The ball sits at the 46-yard line, first and 10 for the Panthers. Vereen there, not much there. That's the way to stop that play. Well, I think the coaches must have talked with their defensive line in halftime and shut this down because they've not been as successful as they were at the end of the first half. Well, I think when they have Rosser or uh, <coughs> Sullivan back there receiving the snap, it's looking as though they're, they're not going to throw the football. So West needs to come down on that formation and just know they're going to run it. But you never know. They may slip a pass out on you, so. 
Second and nine, timeout called for the Panthers. Travis, any more updates? All right, John, checking third quarter scores around the Class 6A state football bracket. We've got Lovejoy leading Marietta 15-8. Also in the third quarter, North Gwinnett ahead of Grayson 9-3. That is a third quarter score. Also, Norcross leading South Gwinnett 14 to nothing. Also in the third quarter, we've got North Cobb ahead of Hughes 21 to 14, and Mill Creek leading Brookwood 42 to 14. Back to you, John. Thank you, Travis. With five minutes and seven seconds left in the third quarter, your score remains 20 to 13. Your Wolverines in the lead. Parkview has second down and nine. Ball sits at the 45-yard line of the Wolverines. During that timeout, I'm looking at Coach T, the defensive coordinator. He gave Hunter Ballou and Mo Kamara an earful. Mo is big outside linebacker, and Hunter, the strong safety, he may be talking to him about coming down hard on that, that formation. Good and they defense closed down on the Panther quarterback keeper. Only gained a couple of yards. It's going to bring up a third down and seven. Great job by Connor Vanderbos, inside linebacker from West. He missed a couple games to end the season, but um, he was the leading tackler at one point in the season. We haven't called his name too much tonight. Maybe he's going to start coming up big. Big play. Youngblood wants to pass it. He's got the ball. He was hit. Throws the ball. Incomplete. Great diving play by Hunter Ballou. Almost came up with a big interception. The quarterback evaded the rush there first. and looked like he had plenty of time and might find somebody open, but good defense by the defensive backfield for West Forsyth. Saw that quarterback had that ball out there in one hand. If I'm a West Forsyth defender. Tell them slap that sucker away. But either way, they're going to have to punt on fourth down. Let's get this football back. Thank you. Pretty fast moving third quarter here. Four minutes and 27 seconds to go in the quarter. Tanner Bridges awaits the kick. It's a high kick. Nice he calls punt. for a fair catch. Oh, go throw a flag. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> there is a flag. Didn't give him room to catch no, it. He was chin to chin with Tanner. That's almost. It's going to be a five-yard halo call, but almost like a taunting thing. He just put his chin right on Tanner's chin. I'll get him up to about the 20-yard line, won't it? Yes, it will. There's balls at, caught it at about the 15. Or is it 10 yards? I'm not sure. But on a big high punt like that, that's just a senseless penalty. I see the coach giving him an earful over there. Well, no, it looks like he's yelling at the referee. (laughs) What's he yelling at? Oh, he's about to get a 15-yarder because he just bumped chest with a side judge. (laughs) Calm down, Cecil. (laughs) I'm not so sure what he's upset about. And now they, they blew, it, blew off. it off. That's unbelievable. <laughs> he literally bumped face masks with Tanner on the fair must catch. Have talked him into it. Yeah, I guess when you're Cecil Flo, you carry some weight with the referees. Now, if I'm Coach Hepler, I think I'd be flipping out. <laughs> they came over and talked to him, so they must have explained it to him. Someone. And there's your reverse. Tanner Bridges with the ball. Is that Tanner? That's Hampton McConnell. Is it Hampton McConnell? He gained about two, three yards on that. Hampton's a kid. He's only a 10th grader, but I just keep waiting for him to have a big breakout game because he's one of the best-looking athletes you'll see. And it may may still come, and he's going to get a shot at playing quarterback next season. Second and seven for the Wolverines. A.J. rolls to his left. There you go. Dumps it off. Oh, he dropped the ball. Didn't quite hold on to it. Yeah, incomplete, I believe. Yeah, they're calling that incomplete. He didn't have the ball hardly 
half step. Ty Anderson almost made a good catch, but he got got popped right as soon as the ball hit his hands. He juggled it a little bit and dropped it as he was going down. Third and seven for the Wolverines. Now this brings up a pretty important third. And I think Parkview is going to bring the house on this play. No, they look, they look like they're on their heels. Maybe they're going to let us throw it. A.J. back to pass. No receiver. There you go. Throws it. Complete. Wow. Nice. They gave him the catch. They did give him the catch at the 36-yard line. The Parkview players were saying, no way, no way, but he got it. He got it. Well, there's no replay in high school football, so <laughs> we got a catch. We got a first down. We're I don't have, the, I don't have that capability yet. He I must, mean, he must the, have got a foot down. First and ten for the Wolverines at their own 36-yard line. We got our receiver covered up on the inside here. We're going to run it. Yeah, Number 21. Trying to cut. Go. Hit Ooh, hard nice after lick. a four-yard run. Steven Gallagher. Yep. Or Brian Porter. Brian Porter on that play. Got four yards up to the 40-yard line. That was a very important first down. They got a second to go, got him out of the hole there. AJ keeps the ball, gets hit hard. You know, we're used to seeing AJ break big runs on those draws, and uh, he's had a few decent tonight, but he's getting three, four yards a pop every time we run that quarterback draw, and that is a, a big, big advantage when you can do that. Well, he got the ball out to the 44-yard line, brings up third down and two for the Wolverines, and there's a whistle. Timeout, Panthers. That's their second timeout of the half. That's where the no-huddle, fast-paced offense is key for West. That um, I think Parkview wanted to make a substitution, but West wasn't giving them time. I heard an interview from Nick Saban a few weeks ago almost hinting, saying that he didn't think it was fair the way they're letting these offenses run the no-huddle because he couldn't get his defensive guys in the game. But, hey, I say you better adapt. And it's almost like Wes has changed philosophies because they were trying to eat some clock away and drive it, but Coach Clack's just trying to keep Parkview on their toes. See Coach Hepler out there talking to the officials. I wonder if he's still asking them what in the world went wrong on that kick-catch interference. (laughs) If you don't know Coach Hepler, one of the more mild-mannered men you'll ever meet in your life. But he gets a job done, obviously. In seven, this is a, is this a sixth or seventh season, John? This is our sixth season. In six seasons, as the head coach for West Forsyth, Coach Epler's put together a 44-13 and 13 record. All right, two minutes, 56 seconds left in the third quarter. Third down and two. A.J. keeps the ball up to the middle. There we go. He's, he's gone. Oh, he can't oh. catch it. Oh, a little stumble on his part. Man, I, I think A.J. wears a size large jersey. If he had a size medium on, he would have had a touchdown. <laughs> he just got a little piece of jersey right there. A.J. would have had a big, big touchdown, but he's still 30, 40-yard run on there. He's checking his helmet. They, he may have to come out of the game for a play. Yeah, he Unless they're going to give him an equipment timeout. Now he's got it. His chin strap got jammed. <laughs> that was a quite, a quite a sweet run on the third down play. Puts the ball at the 33-yard line. A.J. back to pass. Looks. There it is. Runs. Still running. And he's brought down for about an eight, nine-yard loss. Wow. Great coverage by Parkview Secondary. A.J. just had nowhere to go with it. And he's used to outrunning a lot of guys on plays like that, but these linemen from Parkview are just as quick as he is. Uh, 
two minutes and five seconds to go in the third quarter. West Forsyth had a nice-looking drive going, and now we're looking at a second and 19. Second and 19. The ball sits at the 37-yard line. A.J. wants to pass again, throws it a little more quickly, and Mm. it bounces right in front of Tanner Bridges. You know, I think midway through his throw, he changed who he was throwing to. Looked like he was going to go deep to Ty Anderson, and he tried to hit the crossing route over the middle, and he just kind of threw it into the ground. Well, that incompletion brings up a third down and 19 for the Wolverines. Well, I've seen Timmy Hartshorn kick 50 yarders before in practice, but we need about 10 yards on this play to get in field goal range. Parkview's giving us a lot of room as they drop two safeties back 15 yards deep. Let's hit a little 10-yard. And there's a whistle. I think that's going to be delay a game. Yep. Too much time. <clears throat> so uh, that's going to bring up a third down and 24. You know, we talked about it earlier. We've seen A.J. do the little quick kick punt from quarterback. This might be a time to call that play, try to pin part view deep. We're looking at a third and t- over 20. A.J. back to pass. Pressure. Oh. And... Jake Wysork just gonna dropped go, the ball. Oh, I was waiting on the referee to pull his flag for a rough in the quarterback, but I was wishful thinking. AJ's going to punt here. Yeah, he's going to just do his quick kick. Uh-oh. Oh, that's a bad kick on Get his Get a bounce. Part. Get a bounce. It did. Got down to about the 28-yard line. Not one of his better kicks. He had a 50-yard average coming into tonight. Yeah. <laughs> we think A.J. had done that about three times this year. Had one 70-something yarder. But that time, dropped his average at least 10 or 15 yards. Didn't well, get, Didn't get much on that kick. He's mad at himself on the sideline. But either way, we had, we had a pretty good drive going until that big penalty. And um, Parkview's inside their 30-yard uh, line. Defense needs to step up here. they got plenty of rest. A minute 37 to go in the third quarter. First and 10, balls at the 28-yard line of the Panthers. Youngblood, shotgun, quick handoff. Coming around the left side. He's got lots of room. He's brought down at the 50-yard line. That was number 22, uh, Brandon Sullivan. 230. That's a good-sized running back yeah, there. Yeah, he looked like a big truck coming down the field on that play. There may be a flag there on the field. I didn't see it. but They're it'll... talking about it. Yes, there is a flag. But it's, oh, against, it's, West. it's against West. You know, I wonder if they called a... It's a personal foul, dead ball personal uh, foul. Did they call a spear? It looked as though we, safety Brian Porter led with his head on that tackle. Yeah, that's what he's telling them. Safety came in, led with his head, and hit him right in the midsection. So after a 22-yard run, that's going to tack on another 15 yards, and the Panthers have just moved 40 yards down the field in one play. It's turnover time if you're a Wolverine fan. Ball sits at the 33-yard line, first and 10 in Wolverine territory for the Panthers. Quick handoff, number four. He's caught in the backfield by the Wolverines. Great job by Will Brown. They've, our defense has adjusted. Will Brown, Will Brown playing the backside corner position. He knew that there was nobody going out for a pass when they snap it to that guy, and he just came in untouched, stuffed him in the backfield. Loss of three on the play, second down and 13 for the Panthers. The ball sits at the 36-yard line. we got 55 seconds left in the third quarter. They're back in the box again. Worked for them at the end of the first half. Let's see if it works now. Back to pass, Youngblood over the middle, caught. 
It's a 20-yard pass reception for the Panthers. We Balls had, down at the 16-yard line. It's we big, had it's big number 22 again. We had Josh Sullivan. Josh Salo, the middle linebacker, was covering that running back, and he just was faster than him. He was right on his heels, but quarterback threw a, threw a pretty ball, got it right over the middle linebacker's head. First and ten. Up the middle, brought down quickly by go. the Wolverines, gained about two, three yards. Good penetration. It's going to be Connor Vandeboss, middle linebacker. That's the end of the third quarter. All right. Well, tonight's game on listenyourway.com is presented by your Forsyth County Marathon stations, Amos Pump Service, the All-State Chapman Agency, and Andine Chevrolet and Cumming. Visit them on the web at andinechevy.com or in person on Atlanta Road and Cumming. Nobody will sell you a new Chevy for less. We guarantee it. Travis, any um, updates on some scores from around the state? Well, John, we've got a high-scoring affair. It is Mill Creek leading Brookwood 49-14 to now in the third quarter. Other scores in the Class 6A playoffs. It is North Gwinnett now pulling away from Grayson 21-3. to That is also in the third quarter. And Class 5A, Tucker leading North Paulding 27-21. And our old friend Bruce Miller, Coach Bruce Miller at Gainesville, his Red Elephants have pulled ahead of Kell, 42 to 35. It's in the third quarter. Back to you, John. Well, we start the fourth quarter here with the Panthers threatening. Most people thought all roads to the dome lead through Grayson this year. That's kind of surprising to hear North Gwinnett putting it on Grayson a little bit. But Bob Spire over there. He's got one of the better offenses in the state from year to year since he came down to Georgia and started coaching from Kentucky. He's another one of those guys that's considered one of the godfathers of the high school spread offense. Came from the same line of descendants as uh, Rush Propes at Colquitt. So Grayson may be done tonight. Here come the Panthers up to the line of scrimmage to begin the fourth quarter. It's second down and seven. The ball sits at about the 17, 18 yard line of the Wolverines. Now they're back in the shotgun by itself. Yeah, this is a formation we haven't seen all night long. Young Bud keeps the ball, runs to his right, and he's oh, down he, at the four yard line. They fumbled, but it went out of bounds. First down. <clears throat> That's going to bring up first and goal for the Panthers. They went empty set and just. Power ran the football sweep to the right. These guys, their receivers and running backs block as good as any you'll see in high school football. They're going to bring the ball back to the spot of the fumble. First and goal at the five. Panthers come up to the line. Youngblood's up under center this, this time. Hands off to number six, and touchdown Marine. for the Panthers. Shaq Bergreen. Marine. So 73-yard drive for Parkview, very reminiscent of the drive they had to end the first half. Now, if they tackle on this extra point, we got a new ball game. Yes, we do. The ball's in West Precise Court. They need to do something with it. They were able to block that last one. Let's see if they can do that again. That would liven up this side of the stadium. Kick is up, Ooh. and that one's good. We have a tie ball game with one with a 15 minute 15 seconds into the fourth quarter. So it's a new game, as Andy just said. Well, you know those coaches are screaming 48 minutes of football before the game started. And now it's down to 11 minutes and 45 seconds. Who wants this ball game the most? Can West Forsyth do something with it? Which defense can make a stop in the way that uh, Parkview's controlling the football? 
West Forsyth may not get the ball more than one or, once or twice more. Well, the momentum keeps shifting back and forth, so. I think they only had the ball twice in that third quarter. Yeah, both teams are controlling the ball when they get it. Will Brown and Jake Wysorek back deep for the Wolverines. Eric Autry teeing up the ball. That kick is almost going to go halfway into the end zone. Touchback. Wolverines will get the ball at the 20-yard line. Well, I told, I, I'm saying all year, nobody said it's supposed to be easy to win a region championship. Well, it sure is not easy to make it to the final eight in the largest classification of Georgia high school football. We got a heck of a ball game. That was a, that was a really good inside run there by him. I was already, he, he didn't have anything much, but he gained about five. They're going to put the ball down at the 26-yard line, so he gained six, brings up second down and four after Wysorek's run. A.J. A.J. back in the shotgun. Lots of movement. Hands off to Wysorek, going to his right. Got some room. Takes a cut, makes the first down. There's a flag oh, on the play, though. They're going to call a block in the back on Tanner Bridges. As Tanner came to crack down on the defensive back, he turned to go run and chase Jake. Now they called a hold. That's a Bad, bad break for the Wolverines. What would have been first and 10 is going to sit at second and 14. You want to go the other way with 11 minutes to go in this ball game. Penalty puts the ball back on the 16-yard line. They've got to get to the 30-yard line. Second and 14, and as Andy just said, A.J. back to pass. No, he decides to keep it. Runs up the middle. He's got lots of room. He's still on his feet all the way up to the 29-yard line. Great play call by Coach Clack. Great run by A.J. Going to bring up a very manageable third down. Be third and one. Third and one at the 29-yard line. Going without the huddle again. A.J. in the shotgun. Keeps it again himself. Big and he down. got the first down. He got two yards on that, brought down at the 31-yard line. Ten and a half minutes left to play in the game. First down, Wolverines. A.J. hands it off. Part view Look. is recognize something that we're doing because the the right safety and corner as soon as we went into motion both just sprinted to that sweep actually lost a yard on that play the ball sits at the 30 yard line second and 11 for the wolverines clock continues to tick now just under 10 minutes Hands off to Wysorek. He tosses it downfield. That ball was almost intercepted. I think, I think Jake and Tanner were on a different page. Tanner ran a seam route up the hash, and Jake threw the corner out over to the numbers. Dangerous pass right there because the, the left corner for Parkview was the closest man to the football. So it's going to bring up a big, big third and 11. Look at the inside receiver at the bottom of our screen on the hashes. 
There is nobody within 12 yards of him. I'd stand up and throw the quick route right now. There it is. The out. Please. Nice. Good pass. Wyzorek, enough for the first down. He got it out to the 42-yard line, and they had to get to the 41. I'm not sure why they were so far off Jake Wyzorek, the leading receiver for West. But A.J. picked it up, threw a great ball, keep the drive alive. Ball's placed just inside the 43-yard line. A.J. wants to throw again, rolling to his right. Good Quick ball. pass. Great. Complete. Oh, man. The penalties are just eating us up right now. Probably another hold, I would think. Man. Yep. That's a needless, needless hold, too, because we're running the right quarterback sprint out. Nobody was around him. <clears throat> big, big break again against West Forsyth. A.J. needs to talk to his boys in the huddle. Calm them down a little bit and let them know these penalties are killing the drive. I mean, essentially, that's about a 25-yard penalty because we we had picked up how many yards on the play? I don't know if he caught that pass or not. Oh, did he not? I don't think he caught it. Okay. I was too busy fussing at the, the hole. Well, that brings up a first and 23 for the Wolverines. A.J. decides to keep it, run up the middle. He's still on his feet. Good yardage. He got back about 11, 12 yards there. Just got all the way out to the 41-yard line. Just keep protecting that football, A.J. Second down and 12 for the Wolverines. They've got to get all the way to the Panthers' 47 A.J. back to pass. Pressure. He's caught from behind. Oh. Great play. Number 28, the big defensive end. A.J. got thrown hot, down hard Hunter on Thornton. that play. That was Hunter Thornton. He's had a big night for them. Yeah, I said it earlier, but he's a good-looking football player. Loss of five yards brings up third and about 17, 16 for the Pan- uh, Wolverines. Complete to Jake Wyzorek. Brought down for a gain of about, after a gain of about three, four yards. That's going to bring out fourth down and 13. So the Wolverines are going to have to punt. We called the right play there, but John Patterson, the linebacker, he sniffed it out and was right on Jake's tail the whole time. So we need a big, booming punt here from Hampton McConnell. He was the punter earlier in the season, then they switched over to They switched punters midseason. Now they got Hampton back. I think he had a little foot issue going. And he's I've seen him boom some, and I, I'd really like a 50 or 60-yarder here. And that's a delay of game. Whoa, that was a quick delay of game. Huh. Well, the clock was ticking. We're, we're down to 7 minutes and 38 seconds left in the game. So that's a fourth... Mm. 17 now for the Wolverines. Oh, Chucky. Karen Ochaki had been doing the punting duties the last several games. Good end over end kick. No fair catch. He falls down. So Panthers are going to have the ball at the 35 yard line. Seven minutes, 29 seconds left in the ball game. Boy, they've been carrying the they have been running the ball. This this could be a drive that if you gotta stop them here or you might not get the ball back. That's right. They've had two at least two eight minute drives tonight and seven twenty nine to go. West Forsyth better bring their defense right now, right here. Keeps the ball, runs up the middle, and he's hit hard right at the line of scrimmage. He's still on his feet. Lost a yard or two after that. Depends where they marked the ball. Looks like his uh, point of progress got him back to the line of scrimmage. We got a player down. There's a player down on the field right now. It's going to be a part view Panther. It is. 
That was a good good defensive play by the Wolverines interior line there. Just what they needed to start this drive off. Those orange numbers, I can't read them still. I, I think it says 51. I, I'm trying to look at our TV screen here. But it's gotten very quiet in here. I'm, I'm not seeing. Yeah, you hate to see a kid get hurt like this at this point in this big football game. Yeah. Let's hope he's okay. I don't know where he was, the offensive center. Must have been. I see somebody up over there practicing. Yeah, practicing the snaps. Yeah, second down and 10 when they start back play. We've had a great football game up to this point. With seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Let's just hope that this young man's okay and that he's going to get up and walk off the field. It's like they're getting more personnel on the field. Looks like they're sending for some. Yeah, I heard them talking in the press box about maybe we're going to get an ambulance out here. So definitely want to give our prayers to this young man as both teams are huddled on their own sidelines. All right, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to a break, and um, we'll come back to you in just a few minutes and give you some more information about the injured player. And we'll be right back after this. Three sixteen left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the forty-five of the Wolverines, and this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run this to the 5 10. Touchdown, Wolverines. How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow. He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from he Dion. He took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just. <laughs> Holy cow. Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. 
and number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion. Pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown. Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take. And there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sac Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30 to 24. Jacqueline Williamson, her serve is over, dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side, cut shot, kept alive, back in one by Cathedral, and this one is out as Castanon Hill sends it wide, and the Cathedral Dons have won the title. 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block, Robinson leading the break the other way, gets it to Grant, oh. slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the Stag. Runner at third is Chavez, eight to two the score. Bottom of the seventh, the one-two. Popped in the air, this should do it. Corda Posse says, it's mine. Now he's fading on it, and he can't make the catch, but Gaff comes in from center field and does. Congratulations to the St. Mary's Rams, a three-peat. They win it eight to two against Franklin to take the series two games to none. But this is time to run an offensive set that you've done all through the season in practice. Yeah, and you also, you know, you get it to your to your hottest player right now, just like they're getting it to Eichhorst right here. He's going to try to create some space, find somebody on the backside that's open. Eichhorst flushed out to the right. Oh, breaks free of a player. Eichhorst on his own, shoots and scores, bounces a shot home. Cruz can't handle the shot. Eichhorst takes off the shirt and the helmet. And how about that? Alex called it. Eichhorst, after sustaining the injury in the third quarter of play, has scored the game winner with 22 seconds gone in the overtime period. Dogpile on the field. Marin Academy take it. A fantastic finish to this game. And, well, I hope his other ankle isn't hurting after this. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter, right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Helix! And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, <laughs> playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter steps under center. In their tight wing formation, Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run, breaks through, four tackles, and now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Imperial, on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40 yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20 yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64 yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the <laughs> as I look over to our partners of KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him again near serve. the goal line. Keep those Lowell fans quiet over there.
Lum sets it up for Peng. Long, it's out. Low, a magnificent seven titles in the San Francisco section in dramatic style as they pull out a fantastic victory over a spirited Galileo Lions team. They win the fourth game, 31-29, and they take the 2012 Academic Athletic Association San Francisco section title. Officials say no five-second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side, Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob there for Grant. Is. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it, 50-42. They lulled you to sleep. And then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way. And it is good. good. St. Augustine has their first lead of the game. 21 to 20 with 25 seconds to play. The senior McMorrow with a huge kick. Not the longest of his career, but the biggest of his career. Oh, St. Augustine leads it 21 to Already lining up. They won't even have to run that one more play. They just act yeah, yes. Why bother? So there you have it. Your five-time defending Division Three champions, the Cathedral Catholic Dons, running up over and through Olympian 41 to nothing here from Qualcomm Stadium. Patriots down 21-17. Great ball game here. Dylan taking it, looking right, throwing it up top to Gaines. It will be caught by Gaines. Oh, my goodness. It looked like the defender had it, but Gaines stole it away from him. Jason Gaines, are you kidding me, my friend? Oh, boy. It looked like for sure we had an interception by the Tories, but as they both were going to the ground, Jason Gaines just wrestled it away from him. Shane Dillon to Jason Gaines on an 11-yard play. Fanchin in the game, now out, replaced by Hayashi, the libero for defense. Wenzel serve, championship point, ball up in the air. Hayashi's going to bring it back. Richards, deep one over and three. Free opportunity, look for Wallace. No, they go Becker. Hayashi, then tap over and two by Hollingsworth. Now look for Wallace for the match. Kathleen Wallace, no better way for the Bulls to finish it than giving it to their senior leader. 25-12, 25-15, and with eight straight points to close out their third straight D5 championship on a kill by Kathleen Wallace, 25-21 in game three. Branson has won the D5 title. To the backfield, it's Hernandez and Northcutt. Set to throw is Thomas, has time, goes for the home run. It's intercepted in the end zone. Seemed like it, they tried to go to Martin, and Martin slipped. Stockton, Hillmore and Escalon. That's gonna do it, folks. Victory formation, take a kneel, the clock comes out. The clock will tick down the players jumping up at midfield. I think I see a, a Gatorade. D did we have a Gatorade shower? Uh, we most certainly did. Casey Taylor getting the shower there. Very much deserved. Down to 12. Great tackle there by Ronald Williams there to make the stop for Helix. And the Helix fans are starting to celebrate here. This is going to be the final play. Five seconds. Pow Pow will hand it off. And they're going to get in the end zone. Touchdown. That's Keegan who gets in, but that's going to be the end of the ball game. 44-6 to six will be the score. So Oceanside scores on the final play of the ball game. And gets a consolation prize just to, to make this is kind of say that, hey, we didn't get shut out. So 44-6 to six is your score. And Helix is celebrating on the sideline, Oceanside streak of seven straight championship games has been ended. Two minutes and five seconds left on the clock. Clock rolling, third down and 15 for the Patriots. Dylan, he's got time, steps up. He's gonna chuck it deep, he's got a man open. Seth Collins with a diving catch. He hauls it in at the 25. Oh my goodness. I'll tell you right there. Dylan goes to show why he is a division one prospect as he's able to step up elude the pressure, see Collins down the field, and make the connection as 
I'll tell you right now, there has not been a bigger catch for Seth Collins this entire season. Fans nervously wait on the far side. Trips right. Vernon, the lone receiver to the left. Troy Zeen rolls right. Here we go. And he's going to be... Oh, he gets away, but can't get away from the second slew. Vacaville takes over on downs, and the crowd erupts. So does the sideline. Got to watch it. Got to watch the sideline yeah, here. Yeah, they Remember, really they were up 35-26. Two unanswered touchdowns. That's going to do it, folks. Your 2011 Division II Sac Joaquin section champions, the Vacaville Bulldogs. They went 39-35. In a fact, classic. although they have no timeouts, they'll get the ball on the sideline, try to set something up. They can get a couple dribbles and a shot. Yeah, I tell you what, that was a gutsy call there by Coach Aguiar. Oh, what a shot! I tell you what, Javier Kirksey from well beyond the three-point mark takes the inbound pass, throws it up off the glass, and nails a three. And you've got the finish to this Cinderella story as the Ridgeview Wolfpack win the Division Three boys title, 43 to 40. And what Caroline a Martin to serve. Can is third time the charm for Palo Alto. Martin over, dug by Irvin. Lauren, backside, Bedard, Ghani, long! And that's the ball game, and Palo Alto comes from behind. They were down 13-8 in game five. They win it 17-15. Koenig, who will continue to play baseball at the next level. He is going to Central Arizona. About 45 minutes outside Phoenix and Coolidge. This pitch is hit in the 5-5 hole. Nice grab and throw over to first base. Ori Wofford. Full extension dive to his right and gets Tillinghast by a step. Three point game. Down to five seconds. Wilson from straight away fires a three. Go! And that will send it to overtime as Wilson drains the three at the buzzer. Straight on look and he got it for that Woo! big bucket. Jones, long outlet. January's got an opening. January with the left hand. Can't leave him in the lane like that to the basket. He'll put it right through it. And that's what he did that time with the strong dunk. He brought the house down with that one. Now second and 13 for the Dons from their own 24-yard line. Bogart's three-step drop now flushed out. He's rolling to his right. Looking downfield, lost it to Hines. Hines with an amazing grab. Did he get that in bounds? He's still in bounds, running by himself to the 10-5 touchdown. Wow. Unbelievable catch. An Olympian defense thought he was out of bounds, and they just stopped playing. And Hines, with a headsy play, just sprints the other 30 yards into the end zone. And the Dons now extend their lead, 13 wow, to nothing. Jumper at the right at the elbow for Peters. White with Here the dish go. to Gordon. Five slam and jamma. <laughs> I don't even think Valley Center will have to snap the football. They will not. Santana puts on a rush at the end. They travel 91 yards to make it a one-possession game. They try the onside kick. They almost executed it. But a Gatorade bath for the offensive coordinator for Valley Center. Congratulations to Coach Gilster and his staff. Valley Center is your winner in Division Four, 20-14. Over Some of the seventh inning. We'll hear with two outs. Probably our 25th full count of the day. Of course, it's going to be the pressure pitch here with two outs in the final inning. Here it comes. Full count. York delivers. Pitches swung on. Grounded back to the mound. Will they go home? He fires down the first. It's scooped out. Did he get him? He did. Akalani to the Division Three champions of 2012. And what a game. And Johnny York is able to feel the comeback and fire down to Spencer Henderson in time to get Jonathan Wachtel for the third out in the bottom of the seventh inning. Dog pile right in front of the pitcher's mound. And Akalani's take a 4-0 victory 
over Tamil Pius, and what a game, Tom. Maybe they just got to practice for their celebration. Yeah, well, let's see if they can do it twice. Oh, good serve. They got to get their head Kemp. in the game. Oh, what a save there by Fleet. Ooh. Dodds four. That and there's your championship. There it is. <laughs> and this time, champion a little Christian. Less, a, little a little less, less so. enthusiastic. Well, this time they looked at the officials to make sure before they went to celebrate. Right. And that'll just about do it. Here's Wilson, though. He's going to put up a three. No good. Boy, if they did a couple of those, that might have made things a little interesting here in the last few seconds. But instead, the Stags are going to win it 74-64. DeMatha is your national division champion. With time now for just a couple more plays. Dale Sal will be awaiting the fate of the State Bowl Championship to determine their place in the final weekend of the high school football season. As Dale Sal, as time. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We are back. Uh, the injured player was number 51, Blake Dunham. He's a senior. He was the center, is the center for the Panthers. Uh, we have been told that he is conscious, he is communicating, and he has been put on a stretcher, and he's going to be taken to the local hospital to check him out to make sure he's okay. We're going to uh, give both teams a few minutes to get warmed up uh, after the long delay. It was absolutely amazing. With all these people here, you could hear a pin drop for the, in, the entire time we were gone. Yeah, and it's great. They took every precaution to make sure everything was done right. They didn't want to rush anything, but it took a long time, but... That's what you have to do to make sure everything's safe. Well, our thoughts and prayers go out to the Dunham family, especially to Blake himself. The din is beginning to rise in the stadium. In anticipation of play beginning. We've got seven minutes and ten seconds left in a tie ball game. As I said, both teams are stretching and warming up, hopefully to avoid another injury. It'll be a second down about 10 from the 35-yard line, I guess. And that's where the ball is placed. Any more scores, Travis? Let's see. Checking the scores. Colquitt County and Noonan, a back-and-forth contest. It is uh, Colquitt County uh, ahead right now, 18-17 to 17 in the fourth quarter. Uh, the winner of West Forsyth Parkview will be playing the winner of Colquitt County and Noonan. So we'll keep a close eye on that matchup. Other scores in Class 6A. Norcross uh, with the shutout still intact. They are leading South Gwinnett 27 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Also in the fourth quarter, it is Camden County ahead of East Coweta, 34 to 14. That is once again in the fourth quarter. Other scores around the state in Class 6A. It is Lovejoy leading Marietta 22 to 8 in the fourth quarter. All these scores in the fourth quarter. North Gwinnett ahead of Grayson 28 to 10. Also in Class 6A. It is North Cobb leading Hughes 42 to 14 and Mill Creek ahead of Brookwood 56 to 14. As in the fourth quarter that is a look at the Class 6A state playoffs some other scores for you. Uh, this is from Class 5A. It is the Gainesville Red Elephants up now 61 to 42. Gainesville leading Kell it's and over 100 points again there. That's a, that's a high scoring game. It's been back and forth all night. Uh, fourth quarter there as Gainesville is ahead uh, right now. Other scores uh, this is from Class 5A. Once again, Tucker leading North Paulding 40 to 21. That is in the fourth quarter. 
Uh, looking here, this is class in Quad A. At last update, Marist and Carrollton tied at 13 uh, in the fourth quarter. And also in the fourth quarter, Sandy Creek is shutting the door on Dalton 28-7 to in the fourth quarter. Now let's look at your scoreboard, Johnny. All right, everybody, they're getting warmed up here, and we'll be back in action here in just a few minutes, I think. Tonight's game on ListenYourWay.com is presented by Amos Pump Service and Dean Chevrolet, your Forsyth County Marathon stations, and the Allstate Chapman Agency. Are you in good hands? Get a quote today on your home and auto insurance from Kim Chapman at the Allstate Chapman Agency and receive a complimentary copy of the West Forsyth football program. That's the Allstate Chapman Agency at 770-346-9377. You can email her at kimchapman at allstate.com or visit their website at allstatechapmanagency.com. And we're, uh, looks like we're just a few minutes away from playing a last, playing a seven minute and 10 second ball game is really what we're doing. The score 20 to 20. Parkview is going to have the ball at the 35 yard line. Their field goal kicker has been, uh, seeing what he can do from the 45 yard line without a helmet on and nobody rushing at him so <laughs> those of you watching at home I'm glad you stayed with us had a lot of people text messaging and writing on Facebook where we had a feed to the game like John just said we got seven minutes to go so that's the, that's your ball game this thing couldn't be any more tightly matched than it has been through the first three and a half quarters and part view with the ball and they had they had a lot of momentum, I would say, there. And the team's probably going to take this thing one or two ways. Are you going to get real pumped up and play the rest of this game for your center that just got carted off the field? Or is it going to cause a little bit of trouble having to put a new center in the ball game Because they have been pretty dominant in their running game tonight. Running that Wildcat offense, smash-mouth football. So it will be interesting to see with this turn of events how the final seven minutes plays out. Both teams are coming out onto the field. You can hear the crowd roaring again after the absolute quiet we had for about 15, 20 minutes. So here we go. Seven minutes, ten seconds left. In the game, basically call it a brand new game. So is it second and ten? We're gonna have second no and ten from the 35-yard line for the Panthers. No gain on that last play. And Parkview's been going with the running game the last two drives, and I'm imagining they'll stick to it. They do have their they do have two wideouts, so. Number 12 in the shotgun. They may be looking to throw on second and 10. Hands off. Big running back, 22. And he stopped. Oh, good job by Aleph Chaw. Stopped after a gain of about four yards, it looks like, up to the 39-yard line. That's a third down and six. This is a big play for the Wolverines. It's a big play for the Panthers. Yeah, stop here for this Wolverine defense could be huge in determining the outcome of this game. You hear the crowd chanting defense. Shotgun. There's the snap. He's back to pass. He wants to pass. He's rolling. Great. And he's caught in the backfield. By the, he he oh, still got him. Down. They got him. got him. Number three. They're not going to call him down. That was a great Don't play by the quarterback. Up. Yeah, he got rid of it. but uh, It was going to be sacked for a loss, and he just pitched it forward. Some Brett Favre action there. Picked up about five extra yards, but it's going to bring up fourth and eight, so they're still going to punt either way fan screaming that his knee was down, but I'm not sure it makes that much difference at this point. So great great stand by West Forsyth after that long break. Tanner Bridges back deep. 
Should get pretty good field position here. Just asking you to catch it at this point, Tanner. Just hold on to that football. Woo! West comes in, almost blocks it again. He's going to get a good bounce. Ball's still rolling, and it comes back the other way. They let, they oh. gave us two yards. <laughs> Man, I think if Parkview has to punt one more time, Western Side's going to block it. That's about get, the, getting closer every time. Yeah, that's you? about the third time that Will Brown missed it by a fingertip. All right, so Wolverines first and 10 here from their own 25, 26-yard line. Biggest drive of the game for the West Forsyth offense. Trevor O'Brien. Trevor O'Brien gets a couple of yards on that up to the 30, 28-yard uh, line. Brings up second down and eight for the Wolverines. Clock continues to tick. Four minutes and 50 seconds left in the game. Wysorek has the ball, tries Ooh. to turn. He can't do it. That was a great job by number 59 from Parkview. Defensive lineman Sam Willis chased it all the way from the back side. And Jake looked to cut back, and he was right there to stop him. So this is going to bring up a huge third and 11. Lost about three yards on that run. Third and 11. The ball sits at the 25-yard line. They're way off Wysorek again. Yeah, there's nobody on this side of the field covering him. Yeah, he almost just wished he'd stand up and just throw it. And here comes the safety in. It's cut off the slant. 21 is wide open out here. Oh, and he caught the ball. Wonderful, wonderful catch. catch. What a catch Bridges. by Tanner Burgess. Sheesh. Great throw by A.J. under a lot of pressure, too. As he was rushed out to the left side, he stood up and took a lick as he threw it back across his body. Just a, just enough for the first down, about a yard more than he needed. Great Tan great pitch, great throw by Tanner Bridges. Great catch. Excuse me. Wysorek has the ball. He's at the 40. He's at the 45. It's up to the 50-yard line. And he fumbled. No, it was on the ground. No way. They're calling it. Well, here's where we need that instant replay kick back in because I've been told my whole life that the ground – can't cause a fumble and look like the ground did cause that fumble but Parkview has the ball at their own 49 yard line well Jacob Wazor just gave a little bit of extra effort try to stretch it out for the first down and he dropped it they're saying he dropped it before he hit the ground so a tough break for West Forsyth and Jake now the defense got to step up again time's becoming a factor now 342 yeah, three. Got their box back in. There's the snap. Low snap. Low. Oh, hit the back of field. Nice job. Great penetration by West Forsyth. I think they may have figured that formation out. Loss of about seven yards on that. Six yards. The ball's back at the 43-yard line. They lost, yeah, they lost six yards. Brings up second down and 16 for the Panthers. Clock continues to tick. We're at three minutes and 15 seconds left in the game. Here come the Panthers up to the line. Back to pass. It's young blood. Oh, that's holding. There's a pass over the middle. It's caught. They tackled the West Forsyth lineman in the backfield, and there's no flag. Absolutely tackled the guy. And I know I get a little biased towards the end of these close games. But <laughs> I think they're going to run to the first down, looks like. Got another player down. But did anybody else see them tackle our lineman in the backfield? The ball is sitting at the 41-yard line, and they needed to get to the 41-yard line. It looks like it's going to be a first down unless they do a measurement. They are going to do a measurement. Well, I felt like we should have had the hold call, but then I felt like he got a bad spot on the end of that. Looked like he had the first down pretty easily.
You're going to be about an inch short. No, they, they made it. First no, he down. got it by an inch. Two minutes, 20, two minutes, 42 seconds left in the game. First down for Parkview. The ball is at the Wolverine 41-yard line. Their place kicker was practicing from about the 45. 242. Yeah, we, we may have to start calling timeouts if they pick up another first down. Youngblood wants to throw the ball. Wolverines get him. Good job. Him from behind. Great containment there. Loss of about a yard, I think. Or no game. The clock's still winding down. 2.15 to go in this game. And as you said earlier, John, they were the field goal kicker was warming up to kick field goals during that break. And they're, they're knocking on the door for field goal range. Under two minutes now. Second down and 11 for the Panthers. Penalty. Delay a game. Nice. We'll take it. With one minute, 43 seconds left in the game. The Panthers are moving the wrong way towards the field goal. Looks like the right way to me, John. Who are you talking to? <laughs> All right, West Forsyth, come on, defense. Second down, 15. Panthers with the ball at the 46-yard line. Wants to throw it, dumps it over here into the close side, and he's brought down quickly by the Pan the Wolverines. Great job. Not much gain there. Mole, Keanu Mole with reception there. Clock continues to tick. We're down to a minute 27. We're looking at overtime here, boys. Big play right here. Third down. 13 for the Panthers. I think if they don't pick up first down here, West Forsyth will call timeout. With a minute and three to go. Youngblood, rowing back, wants to pass. Throws it down the middle. It's up in the air. Oh, incomplete. It's going to stop the clock. It's going to save West Forsyth from calling a timeout. 56 seconds left in the game. Fourth and 13. The ball sits at the 43-yard line. So does Parkview definitely punt here? Yeah, I think you got the punt here. Yeah, I think so too. Punting team looks like they're coming on. West's going to get the football with about 50 seconds and three timeouts. Do you go all out for that block here? I think I would, the way that we've come so close. I think you got to. Just do not. No roughing the kicker at this point. Tanner Bridges going back for the punt return. Here's the snap. Low snap. We played it safe. High punt. Beautiful, beautiful punt. Goes out of bounds at the seven-yard line, eight, nine-yard line. So the Wolverines have 47 seconds. They have 91 yards to go in order to win this ball game. But don't forget, Timmy Hartshorn, I've seen him make one from about 40 yards out. So if they can get the ball down to about the 30-yard line, 25-yard line, you don't want to make a mistake down here, though. Definitely do not want to turn over here. AJ waits the snap. They're going to get a delay a game if they don't hurry up. AJ back to pass. Keeps it. Running forward. And he's get, he gets caught. Hit hard. We may be playing for overtime ourselves. Hey. Fans are all screaming and yelling at the referee because it looked like one of the players. Uh, it kind of got a little after the play action on yeah. AJ. <laughs> I couldn't see too well from where I'm at. I could just go by the reactions from Parkview all the called fans. time out there. That's their last time out, I think.
I think you got to just kneel down here and yeah. take, let, it, let it run out. There's 31 seconds left. Well, West Forsyth, no stranger to overtime. They won the region championship on the final game of the season by going overtime with Lambert. If you're not familiar, the overtime format for high school football, very similar to college now where both teams will start from their 15-yard line. They'll flip the coin if we go overtime to see who goes first. But there's still 31 seconds to go. West has three timeouts. Second down and 14, but they're pinned deep, deep in their own territory. Ball on sits the, at the six-yard line, second and 13. Very tight formation for the Wolverines. Johnny, you may be right. They're just maybe be taking a knee here and go into overtime. And he does. He does. So that's going to probably be the last play of regulation. Who will go to overtime? Travis, you got any uh, updates for us while we wait for the coin toss and, and uh, get to overtime? All right. It's an exciting night here of high school football. And we do have some scores for you. Still in the fourth quarter, Colquitt County leading Noonan 18-17. to One-point game there. And the winner of tonight's game will face the winner of Colquitt and Noonan. Elsewhere, we have some final scores. It is Norcross defeating South Gwinnett 27-7, the final score. Another final, it is Camden County with a win 34-14 over East Coweta. Another final score, North Gwinnett defeating Grayson 28-10. Also, it was Mill Creek beating Brookwood 56 to 21, and North Cobb defeated Hughes 42 to 14. We have a fourth quarter score for you as well. Lovejoy is leading Marietta 22 to 15 in the fourth quarter. And we got to have a real exciting game here for our audience watching at home. Thank you, Travis. Tonight's game on ListenYourWay.com is presented by Andine Chevrolet. The Allstate Chapman Agency, your Forsyth County Marathon Stations, and Amos Pump Service, specializing in residential and commercial properties. Amos Pump Service installs quality well pumps, water lines, and sewer and septic tanks. Call Amos Pump Service for a free consultation at 770-887-0414 or visit amospumpservice.com. Coaches are meeting at the center of the field, talking about how overtime takes place in the playoffs. I forgot to read my contract. I'm not sure if we're on time and a half now or <laughs> is this double time? I, I'm not sure. For overtime, I'm not sure how that works. It's playoffs too, so it may be triple time. Yeah, I think it may be yeah. so. Yeah, Travis, <laughs> how does that work for us? <laughs> I think it looks like West may have the ball first. Is what they said? Yeah, it looks like West has got the ball first. That's the case. We must have lost the coin toss because generally you like to go second in overtime to see whether you need seven or three. Or eight. Or eight, that's right. If you missed the Lambert-West Forsyth game, West Forsyth got the ball first. They drove right down and scored, and then Lambert scored also, but opted to go for two to win the game and came up just short. So West Forsyth won the region championship by one point. Looking to uh, do something similar tonight. Well, now the captains come out. I don't think anybody won anything yet. So oh, maybe okay. that was just discussion. Oh, they hadn't flipped yet, I guess. Okay. okay. I guess they're going to rule discussion with the coaches. Now they'll flip with the players. Oh, okay. Yeah, they didn't do it this way against Lambert. Pizza in the back row smells pretty good, you know, guys? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just telling John a while ago, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> well, if I heard Travis right, all the games were done except one. And we're still sitting here. Well, the original captains uh, have met again at the middle of the field. We're awaiting the coin toss. There it is. 
And I believe Parkview has won the toss. So he's going towards the right, toward from right to from left to right. Yeah, we got a slight breeze tonight, blowing you know almost horizontally across the field, but it is blowing a little bit towards that corner of the end zone. And Timmy Hartshorn made one field goal earlier going this way, so I guess Coach Epler said he'd like to go that way again since Timmy's already hit from that distance or from that position. Well, the ball will get placed at the 15-yard line. I'm sure A.J. Erdely and Jacob Wazort and Andrew Marshall, the gang, they don't want a field goal right here. They want seven points. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in overtime for the second round of the playoffs. West Forsyth Wolverines getting the ball first. AJ up under center. Hand off up the middle, a couple of yards. Second down and eight. Trevor O'Brien got two yards on that. Wolverines playing it safely. AJ up under the center once again. And why? And AJ's brought down way back at the 28-yard line. It's going to be about a 12, 13-yard loss for the Wolverines. AJ slow to get up. Yes, he is. And he's, he's going to have to come out of play on a big, big third down. They got a couple of what? A couple of Parkview players hurt there. Or is it one of each? There's players down all over the place. Yeah, Parkview and Early's going to have to come out of play. I don't know because he's back up. Early's back up. He's up. But we got the but we got another player down. We got the Parkview coaches talking to Erdely about something. That's strange. We had a Parkview player and a West player down. I think the West player is still down. I think they were tangled. Oh, up now this is strange. Cecil Flo came out and got right up in AJ Erdely's face, and now Cecil Flo is over talking to the referee, trying to tell him he's exhibiting concussion. Symptoms, I guarantee you, because that's a new rule this year where if a player is exhibiting concussion symptoms, they make them come out and be evaluated by a trainer, which could make you miss a whole series. And Cecil Flo is lobbying for it over here. <laughs> Did you see him? <laughs> so now he's being checked out by the officials. That's, in my opinion, about as low as you can get. They're going to make him come out of the game, too. I say it's low. I guess if you're a Parkview fan, you say it's smart on Cecil's part. But Well, we've got another crowd. This time it's the West Forsyth players crowding around their players. That concussion rule, if you're not familiar with it, when I took the coaches' clinic to start this year, I remember specifically talking with a bunch of other coaches in the clinic with me that that rule is going to come back to uh, really get some people ticked off in playoff time, and I hope it's not us now because on third and 24, we're probably going to have to throw the ball just to stay in field goal range. Early still seems to be on the field now. There's some officials and coaches huddled around. Who was the injured player? Was that number 71? He's coming off the field. We got backup quarterback John Conway over here warming up on the sideline. 
hopefully just in case. We do have West Forsyth trainer talking to AJ with an official there. Hey, West has got two number 13s, guys. Number 50 for the Wolverines, Cody Mixon. The offensive guard is being helped off the field. AJ staying on the field. So they're going to let him hang around. Good try, Cecil. <laughs> okay. Third down. 24 to go. The ball's at the 29 yard line. You got to just try to, try to get something back to enable you to have a field goal, I would think, here. Yeah, you, you just want about 8 to 10 yards here to make it a somewhat manageable field goal. AJ back in the shotgun. AJ waits the snap. Back to pass. He's scrambling, looking, passes in, bounces in the ground in front of his receiver. Tanner Bridges, it bounced right in front of him. So this is a big decision. Fourth down, 29 yard line. They got to get all the way to the five yard line. And here comes Timmy Hartshorn in for the field goal. He's going to set up a 40. Six yarder. He's going to be putting the ball down at the 36 yard line. 46 yards. You're right. Well, I've seen him do it in practice. Now I want to see him do it in a ball game. Here's the snap. Kick is up. And. Yes, sir. It's good. Oh, dang. They don't get much bigger than that. 46 yards. Well, a high school kicker. He didn't clear the crossbar by more than about two or three inches, but that's all he needed. He puts three points on the board. But don't get too excited because if you're this West Forsyth defense now, you've got to stop them from scoring a touchdown. Well, here come the Panthers. They get the ball at the 15-yard line. West Forsyth is ahead, 23-20. to Panthers need a touchdown to win and field goal to tie. Got their spread formation. There's a snap. Bobbles the number four has the ball. He's around the corner. And touchdown, Parkview. Well, that's ball game. And that and is the ball game, ladies and gentlemen. One play is all it took, and Parkview took it in for the score. Wins it 26-23. So this great season from West Forsyth is going to come to an end here in the second round of the state playoffs. Heartbreaking loss for the players, coaches, and fans. You got to give them props on a great season. Or they'll finish at ten and two, and this was a great Parkview football team they just lost to. Want to thank Play On Sports for allowing us to bring you the game tonight. Want to thank Listen Your Way and Travis Chaffins for bringing us the audio. Thank you all for uh, tuning in this season. We've had a great time doing this. We're going to be coming back to you next year. But this will be the West Forsyth football broadcast signing off for the last time this year. Absolutely. What a season, John. Thank you, sir. What a season. Well, for John White, for Andy Coleman, for Johnny Talent, this is Travis Chafin. And this has been the 2012 high school football season brought to you by Andine Chevrolet, your Forsyth County Marathon stations, the Chapman, the Allstate Chapman Agency, and Amos Pump Service. Thank you all for joining us. And we had a great time. From West Forsyth, where the Wolverines have fallen 26-23 to the Parkview Panthers. So long, everybody.